Houston, our instruments are showing that we have a incoming message from deep space. Repeat, Houston, we have an incoming message from deep space. Houston, we'll begin playing message now. Houston, we're going to try and translate that up here. Hold for translation. Translation complete. We'll begin playing message now. Hey, it's me, Melissa. What do you do when the aliens invade? Take a shot of MK Ultra and watch Melissa Jade. Put on your tinfoil hat and tune right in. We got that crime spree, flat earth theories, government conspiracies, a complex Mandela effects, unidentified objects, a mind expanding, fake moon landing, what it all depends understanding. It's me, Melissa. It's me, Melissa. Aliens is on the sun, or in Area 51. Time travels, unravels, haunted castles, cops are baffled, potential experimental thoughts that make you transcendental. It's me, Melissa. It's me, Melissa. Crime streets, flat earth theories, government conspiracies, complex Mandela effects, unidentified objects of mind expanding, fake moon landing, what it all fits understanding. It's me, Melissa. It's me, Melissa. Hello, everybody. Oh, Musicity Mom. <laughs> oh, Musicity Mom. Musicity Mom starts off the live with a $20 super chat. Flat Earth Wednesday. Sorry, Chowder. Thank you so much, Musicity Mom. That is so sweet and that is so funny. I understand. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It is so lovely to see my amazing community. Thank you, Musicity Mom. Hello, Dara. Hello, Kathy Four. Princess Gary. Hello, Aries. Hello. Oh, thank you, Yankee Ka uh, Yankee Kyle, for being a member for a month. Melissa, good evening, Squeet. Uh, oh, my God. I'm sorry. I can't talk, you guys. I did not sleep. Uh, if you know, you know. I'm very tired. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Cutie Pie, for being a member for four months. Just can't get enough. Thank you. Hello, Kathy. True crime time. Punket. I have my punket in here. Chase is on the case. Poor Linda. I was about to say hello to Nightbot. That is how tired I am. Miller. Lace Lemons. Sweet as taboo. Sexy wild thing. McLivin. Freaking Papa Elvis Claus. We have MK. We have my fellow Melissa. Ginger Busse. <laughs> Of 10 assholes. I'm still green. Yes, you are. Hello, Daylene. Water loving Zog. Poor Linda. Let me see. Nanya. We are not going all night tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Dara, for being a member for seven months. Love this channel. I love you guys. Thank you so much for the support. Addicted to art and crime. Hey, MJ, it's been a while. It has been a while. Thank you so much for being here. Let me see. Robin, Nick Giles, Leanne, Capri's 10 months. Thank you so much. I know Charlie saw WSU on Dago's last night. I haven't seen her in forever. Wow. 
Wow, wow. Hello, LC, Harlot, People May, Angel D, under review. Welcome, Bridget. Welcome, Grandma Sherry. Thank you so much for becoming members. Trio Girl. Okay, let me jump all the way down. Hello, a dose of reality with Jen Lu. She folds, she bends. Hello, Crichton. You're not new here. Hello, Marcus. Hello, MJ. I need you to know I hate drama, but your commentary cracks me the floor. <laughs> so, so thank you. Um, hello, AN13. First time chatting. Well, thank you. We're happy to have you in the chat, even if for all the people who just view. Uh, you're just as much as appreciated, but we like when you pop into the chat every once in a while too. Hey, Deets. Deets. Happy birthday to Deets. I am so very sorry to start your birthday the way that it did start, but seriously, um, I hope you had an amazing day and uh, I am deeply sorry, but we're happy to have you here. Hey, Mima. Mima. <laughs> Mima. <laughs> oh my gosh. Akasha. Pretend this is a big green message that says, yay, modern delicious for two years now. Oh, I love you, Akasha. All right. So hi, Elizabeth Shambles, Heather, Anyanka. Oh my gosh. And again, I apologize. I'm probably going to be mixing up my words. I am really, really tired. I'm really, really tired. But we're going to push on through. We're going to push on through. So I'm trying to organize my thoughts um, because I'm trying to figure out. There's basically two episodes worth of content to go through. So I'm trying to organize what I'm going to do tonight and what I'm going to save for the next episode. Um, I think I'm going to save Dave for the next episode. And I think I'm going to focus on a little bit of Justin and Harsh for tonight. Okay. All right. So there's like, hey, Allie, there, there's... All right. All right. So I'm going to focus on... Let me start here. Do, 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 do. All right. So I've been covering this case from the very beginning since Dave is um, allegedly um, a fraternity member who had come out and spoken on two channels, two or three channels. He also was in the Cyber Sleuth Paramount series, even though his identity was blurred. But as far as I'm understanding so far, I, like I told you guys, I'm working behind the scenes to try to do as much as I can to verify and get receipts um, to get the full story of what's going on here. Um, so as far as I, as far as I'm understanding with the Paramount series so far is that in order to be a part of it, they had to, to verify. Um, and so for Dave, even though I can't verify it, but from what I'm being told, I think his, uh, identity had to be verified. So but as far as the Snapchat messages, I don't, I don't know. But so he was part of the Paramount series. And uh, what his significance is, is that similar to what WSU mom Kim said her daughter experienced, Dave claims that he was part of a Snapchat group that found out about the murders prior to 911 being called. So we will go over Dave's panels, though, the next episode, because I want to focus on for tonight's episode. Where is 
the source of this information coming from? I want to discuss a little bit about an email chain that is going on. So I have been covering this case from the beginning. Hey, Sleuth and the Truth. I've been covering this case from the beginning. Now, there are some creators. Hi, um, Bowdy. So I've been covering this case from the beginning. And there are some creators in this chat. So there might be some people who will know who, what I'm talking about. Um, I've been covering this case from the beginning. And from the beginning, pretty much the beginning of the coverage, I'll have to go into my emails to check. But pretty much from the beginning, I have been part of an email chain. And I'm trying to remember if it's always been from the same. It's either been from one account or two different accounts that has always um, been sending me, me along with a, like, it's been forwarded to, I can see who it's forwarded to. It's forwarded to me and probably like 15 other creators. And it is, when I say probably uh, like, it takes up about like 15 scrolls of your phone, each email of paragraphs, paragraphs, paragraphs of what they allege occurred for these Idaho murders. And not just like, oh, here's what my opinion is. Like I'm talking about when I talk about deep rabbit holes, I'm talking about deep rabbit holes. And what I'm noticing is some of these creators that are posting videos after videos after videos, well, a lot of the information that are within these emails are what's coming out in these videos. Okay, so who's behind these emails? Are they all connected? Oh, so we'll take a look at them because it was just on another video drop. I don't know, if, not yesterday. It was the day before yesterday that this creator put out one of these emails on her live. So we're going to get into all of it and we're going to go into a little bit of harsh reality. Harsh reality I haven't been familiar with. Um, I never particularly watched his stuff. So I only recently got pointed in his direction. I had no idea he was literally making like 15 videos a week still currently on the Idaho stuff. But he is one of them as far as the information that are attached in the email chains that's coming out in the videos. So we're going to get into all of it. But first, hi, Maui girl. Aloha. But first, I want to, I want to show, <laughs> I want to show you guys the other night. Remember we were going through Justin Allie says, I've been waiting for Harsh to get called out for the ridiculous shit he spews several times a day sometimes. Proud of Melissa for this. Oh, Allie. Mwah. Um, yeah, see, I'm not, I was never familiar with Harsh. See, out of all of the, the people I was paying attention to, I never did. Hi, Fur Coat Mama. Hi, Brooke Off, Heather Bratt. I blocked the critter you're talking about right now. Harsh? Mojo Blue? Really, Brooke Off? Hey, MK. Okay, see, I'm not, I'm not super familiar. Okay, but, all right, so first, though, first, I just want to, all right, we last left off with Justin, so let me start with Justin, because remember... <laughs> 
you remember how the last episode we we left off with Justin, okay? Justin posted right as we ended. I think so, right, Harlot? Like this screenshot. Justin posted right as we ended. And I think it's so funny because he because somebody asked during that live, like, is Justin still around? Hi, big Al. Is Justin still around? Like, is he, you know, like, and well, here's your answer. You know, like, um, let me show you the answer, but hold on. Let me just make sure you guys know. Please be advised any information, any screenshots, whatever I'm pulling up is in no way accurate, no way verified. I am pulling it up to show you guys to expose what people are willing to do surrounding such, um, you know, serious cases. Please do not take any of the information and run with it. You know, viewer discretion is advised. Um, okay, but so look at this. So is Justin still around? I don't know. You tell me. So let's let's take a look at what he had posted five minutes after I ended my live the other night. <laughs> hey Shay. So here's Justin. Oh fuck me. <laughs> you have got to be shitting me. I have Chapins in the family. Fifth great grandparents. <laughs> so wait, okay, hold on, wait, wait, hold on, uh, hold on. If you don't remember where we last left off, let 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 me refresh your mind real quickly. Let me re let me refresh your mind real quickly. This is where we last left off with with Justin. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on, hold on. We last left off right here with Justin. Hey guys, I want to give you some background information. My father was besties with Chief Fry. My father worked with Chief Fry. My father worked with Chief Fry's father. My aunt Linda also worked with Chief Fry and Chief Fry's father. They all worked together at Merco Latino which was a technology company before it went under and got bought out and renamed Marco Technologies. My uncle Dave is a dentist and orthodontist. He knows the Funk family. My cousin Mickey is a cop for Rock Falls and Rockford PD. She knows Brent Kopaka. And I got assigned to Kyle Payne at Fort Benning as my CEO. Furthermore, my cousin Randy from Southampton, PA, right next door to Albrightsville, PA, has his hands in the real estate money laundering cookie jar. He's been laundering money by purchasing and selling single family residences, along with Fry and his cronies. Cause Fry's got his hand in the same cookie jar. And my dad knew about it. My dad was investigating Fry when my dad died. I'm in the middle of all of this crap for a fucking reason. Okay. That's literally where we left off. So you have to remember in the beginning, Justin originally said, hey, I'm coming out. I work for the defense. I was chosen because I am not under the gag order. Despite working for the defense, uh, there's this loop. Don't ask me what the loop is, but there's this loop. I'm not bound by the gag order. But because I am also trans and Dylan is trans, she decided to use me to share her story. Please be, just be respectful. Let's focus on the topic here. <laughs> because I'm trans and Dylan is trans, again, this information is not accurate. I am being used to put forward this story. Dylan has followed my transition and my story for a while now. So that is why she's using my platform to come out one day, AKA this upcoming Wednesday, Dylan will be coming on to give an exclusive interview. Um, this was multiple people who did this. <laughs> Basically it was, uh, Oh my God. Dylan, uh, what's it called? Justin had no direct involvement. Okay. And he was just sharing Dylan's story. And then it evolved into what you just heard. 
Justin, literally every family member on his tree is directly involved in every person within this murder investigation, okay? Uncle Dave, the orthodontist, cousin Nikki, the cop, Uncle Randy, his dad, Chief Fry, Chief Fry's dad, and then it ends with, I am directly involved. Now, why these people within this always Kimbleweed, Justleweed, Dottleweed away, I, I don't know. I don't know, but they do. Why their sto- stories always evolve into being directly involved, I-, I don't know. But keep that in mind because that's where we last left off. So you guys asked, oh, is Justin still around? Okay, so I ended my live two days ago. And this is what was posted. Well, not this. This is Justin updating his um, job for the Department of Defense, but that was back in 2018. But wait, where did it, where'd it go? Who's got his hands in the cookie jar? Where can I put it? Oh, here it is. Okay. (laughs) This is right after my live. Oh, fuck me. You have got to be shitting me. I have Chapins in the family. (laughs) Fifth great grandparents. (sighs) And it shows, like, the family tree going down. I don't know. Welcome, Lisa. I don't know how um, Justin is directly related to everybody. Everybody. But he is. He went from just working for the defense. And when I say that, like, as if it's, like, a small role. And being chosen because of his story to directly, like, his aunts, his uncles, his cousins, his great aunt twice removed dog was directly involved in this. Like, how? How? I don't know. I don't understand. But still, yes. So there's your answer. Still, yes, to this day, he is very much actively posting this, okay? Um, but Harlot said, what was it, Harlot, that it wasn't even, it ended up not being Chapin, it ended up being Chapman, right? It didn't end up being Chapin at all. It was Chapman, I think. So I like, oh my goodness, these people. Okay. So. This was a post, and this was a post from October 22nd, 2023. And it was about Justin, but it it, it was a nice little nutshell. And it said, um, Justin is now claiming that he got Bill Thompson kicked off the case and is now accusing Chief Fry of yet another murder. Remember I told you guys Justin accused Chief Fry of murder? Justin is also now claiming he is Brian Koberger's cousin and Hannah Cleary's biological brother. He says Natalie Holloway is alive and well and was Kaylee's house mom at Alpha Pi. He also says Timothy Timothy Pitson has been living with Chief Fry. I'm not I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding, okay? Oh, Jesus. Good Lord. 
He also claims Brent Kopaka isn't dead. Justin is also under the delusion he is going to be called as a last minute star witness in this case because he isn't an expert because he is an expert in military and LGBTQ issues. Never mind that neither topic have anything to do with this case and that he couldn't even get through basic training. This self-proclaimed star witness can't even get the defense or his imaginary handler to send him a plane ticket to go to Idaho. He resorted to asking strangers for hookups on cheap plane tickets. Um, yeah, da, 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 I'm trying to find like this. Nick. The frats are, hold on. Okay, and these are just some of his posts. So he posts, Moscow Police Department Chief of Police James D. Fry has been taken into FBI custody. He is facing a minimum of two murder charges. We found the two smoking guns we needed to place Fry in Oak Park at the time of the murders. The bloody shoe prints found with the knife that has canine DNA on it sealed the deal. The double homicide case of Tom Johnson and Leslie Jones is now closed. Thanks to yours truly working with the FBI and Oak Park PD, as well as Koberger's defense team. I remember I told you guys this the last episode, but I, I didn't have the screenshot ready. I told you he claimed Fry of literal murder and that he was taken into custody. Yes, Angel. And then he said, like, you guys will see. It's going to be announced. Like, you know, he's in custody. Uh, spoiler alert, he wasn't. Like, but this, listen, as, like, silly as it is, as and as much as, like, we could chuckle, hey, Glowbug, it's dangerous what these people do. It really is. It's dangerous. And then... Look, how come I find Timothy James Fry Pitson in Moscow, Idaho, and you haven't? The dude who has been raising him is the Moscow chief of police, which uh, you should look at him, the chief, for the murders of Tom Johnson and Leslie Jones from Oak Park while you're at it. If you don't know Timothy Pitson, Timothy Pitson has been missing uh, for a very long time. I don't know the exact year, but is presumed to be dead. Um, very sad story. But you can't just accuse not even just the chief of police, anybody of this. This, like, the legal system, the court system, it's not caught up with technology and social media yet, but there will be a day where it is, and these people will be held accountable, but the crazy part is people believe them. People do. And... Even if, like, people don't directly get their information from Justin, there could be, like, somebody who sees this, then takes this information, repeats it, and then somebody hears it, repeats it there. And then I hear, I, I like, I watch the information spread. And it's crazy, man. You think so, Unbiased? Unbiased says, harsh reality is the real superstar. We're going to get into harsh on this episode. I thought it was longer than 10 to 15, but you may be right, Kathy. I don't, I don't remember. I loved watching because like, I love the most like unsolved mysteries and Timothy Pitson is always on one of the most unsolved, usually with uh, CCTV footage. You live in uh, Oak Park? Growing up, shockingly, not related to Justin, and they have the third highest crime rate in the county, so I'm fairly certain they aren't investigating Chief Fry. Well, what Justin did at this time was, just like he said, Dylan will be on Wednesday. 
and Wednesday never never came. Well, Wednesday came, but Wednesday came and the interview never came. But he was like, uh, Chief Fry was in custody, and you guys will see it. And then nothing ever came. <laughs> like, hi, Linda. So he made things like, that is a defensive wound. But also, Indiana is a one-party consent state for recording. Rookie cops didn't announce they were wearing cameras and recording. Oh, can everyone stop lying about Hannah's death? Because Koberger killed her too. So Justin was very adamant, still is very adamant about the death of Hannah Cleary. It was an overdose. I don't want to get too much in it because I just want to be respectful. Um, but he's very adamant about there's something more to Hannah Cleary's death. Hi, Rosie. All right. <laughs> and then this is <laughs> Justin's video. <laughs> um, coming soon, the Idaho 7, Ethan Chapin, DNA doesn't lie. Sneak peek. Ethan Chapin, are we related or nah? <laughs> nah, you're nah. Nah. <laughs> I I mean, I can't say for certain, but nah, nah. I'm assuming nah. But that's just me. I mean, put a one in the chat if you think they're related. Put a two in the chat if you think nah. Because Justin thinks ev like he's related to everybody. So. Okay. Now these are going a little bit back. A little bit back. So when it says like one month ago. No, they're, they're longer than one month ago. Cause I took the screenshots longer, but so mo most, is there any ones? Is there any, oh yeah, <laughs> MK, the Franklin. Um, but I want, I want to show you guys the things that Justin was saying. I showed you guys some, but I have more screenshots. Um, just so you can see, just so you can see you, you heard what Justin originally claimed. And then how can you go from your original story to this? I don't know. I don't know. Hey, LSU, Nancy Drew. Okay. He was moved. She was not. This is about two specific people who are the missing link in all of this. Difference of opinions is about a political event which occurred and has been a battleground for the past five years. It is not coming from the families. What will you learn will clarify everything you have been confused about and hasn't made sense. There will be a very, very large problem that no one sees coming, but the good guys will prevail in the end. It is not a small piece of evidence. It is an extremely big piece of evidence. The injury, army, second chance, people don't know. The person being protected. This is about two specific individuals who are the absolute center of this. It doesn't have anything to do with Ethan. It's two individuals no one has spoken about because they don't know the story. It doesn't have anything to do with any of the roommates. It's about the missing link, the secret weapon up their sleeve has nothing to do with lovers, a different kind of mentor-mentee relationship, which is an equivalent exchange. Move is not about Ethan. The murders were filmed. Okay, what I want you guys, okay, this is going to tie into when I get into the harsh stuff, okay? So please make a mental note of this. Mental note it. Because I want you to 
This is the whole narrative of tonight's live. Where is this information coming from? The murders were filmed. Yes. Filmed. The memory card from the GoPro is in the safekeeping with the defense. Every single Greek knows every single detail, but have lawyered up under the Greek code of silence. Quinn absolutely plays a role in this. He's a known liar. I don't care on Yanka. You make that mental note. <laughs> no I'm kidding. I know it's, it's hard. Um, but remember this one. Okay. Cause we're going to circle back around to it. <laughs> you full of shit, yo. No, okay. <laughs> There's, there is people calling it out back then, but this was a while ago. Like this was, this may have been, I don't know where yet. Yeah, this may have been an entire year ago. Yeah. This is Justin. Ready? I am the missing link. I tie every last one of these clowns to each other. Brian is a blood relative on my dad's side. So... He went, hey, what's the obsession? He went, he went from Dylan just chose me to share her story because she watched my story and wanted to choose me because it, it deserved to be shared by somebody else that transitioned to I am directly involved and now Brian is my blood relative on my papa's side. I am also related to Albert Einstein. What did I tell you, fuckers? Do you think I would lie to my people? What did I tell you last live? You think I would lie to my audience? I told you guys he said he was related to Albert Einstein. I told you. I told you. Guys think I would lie to you? Nope. There it is. I freaking told you. So Justin says, <laughs> Brian is a blood relative on my papa's side. I am also related to Albert Einstein and the late Reverend John Papworth of the Church of England on my papa's side. Albert Einstein made an enemy of the Wilson family during World War II when Nazi Germany was rising to power. The Wilson family offered Albert a job at Christ Church in Oxford, England. He basically laughed in their faces, said F you, and continued his studies and career at Princeton here in the States instead. Fry, Hannah, and Bethany are relatives on my mom's side. Come to find out, my mom's side are Mormon. Did I hear a beep? Hey, Shay, Shay. Did you know Justin was related to Albert Einstein? Of course he is. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? Well, actually, no, I'm I'm not good. I'm fucking exhausted. I really can't even speak tonight. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like struggling to put together words, but I, I'll I'm, lie and just say I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Screaming from the chat tops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. Busting the caps lock. <laughs> Screaming from the chat tops, busting the caps locks. I like that. Oh, shit. Yes. So I figured we'll go through some Justin ones and then transition into the harsh reality and the 
emails, which, you know, with Watts, Watts the obsession in here, I'm curious if she's one of the creators that also has gotten the chain uh, emails that a lot of us creators have gotten. Yeah. <laughs> Teeth says, book up, MJ, that live was child's play. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Deets. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you, Armand. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So. All right. So the car was a 2017 Hyundai Sonata. The two people in the car were EB and SC Jr., which I have been saying since December, but no one will listen to me. Brent is alive and well. If you look hard enough, you will find out where he is. He left a clue before he fled for safety. The weird science is about the trans piece of this that everyone continues to ignore, pretend, and deny is not there and does not exist. But jokes are on them. Quite a few people in this mess are trans and it has everything to do with all of this. Why do you think no one knows the truth about Hannah? Hannah's own biological sister has not been told the truth. And hold on, because some of these are out of order a little bit. Okay. The prosecution have already flat out stated they are not giving the defense the DNA evidence they are withholding. It is against the rules of the court for the prosecution to withhold DNA evidence from Brian. That is a positive DNA match to Brian. They cannot hide Brian from Brian. The only time the prosecution can legally withhold DNA evidence is when that DNA did not match the defendant, meaning Brian had already been exonerated by that DNA evidence alone. But Ann Taylor has the GPS data from Brian, Brent, and Darren's vehicles, which prove all three boys were in Pullman together the entire damn night. So at this time, Justin was literally including Darren, Brent, and Brian, claiming that they were together the night of the murders. Brent Kopaka's best friend who we had on this channel for an interview. Okay. You have anything to say? No, not yet. <laughs> Sorry. I was just chatting for a little bit. I'm listening though. The Justin Enigma. Mm -mm. Who's he not related to? That's the question. Nobody. Brian has been framed. I can't say anything else at this time. Okay. You're in for one hell-ass rude awakening. You have no fucking clue what this is about. Hmm. <laughs> that energy got raised quick. You have no idea what's coming. It was never Brian's DNA to begin with. That is all I can say. You have to remember, he said he works for the defense. He works for the defense. Yet he is also Brian's blood relative. Make that make sense. You will all know very soon. You are pretty much the only one who knows what's up, most likely. Good thing I have the proof on paper from Oak Park PD. You will be eating those words when that motion to dismiss is granted and Brian is exonerated on Monday. And the motion, wait, and uh, you guys, this, this, these were taken last year. Let me be clear. Um, so spoiler alert, that did not happen. Um, this was many Mondays ago. So when Brian is exonerated on Monday and the trial comes to Chicago, where I am stucking having to testify. So now Justin is going to testify because all of this shit has to do with me and some tools who sabotaged my career and pissed the wrong guy off. Kyle Payne was my desergent. Is D-S-G-T desergent? I don't know what it stands for. Desergent? You have know. no idea. I don't know. Desergent? 
you have no idea of the shit storm that is on the way. And they never saw my ass coming for them. I was always too smart for the military. That is absolutely not what happened. You have no idea what is coming. It was never Brian's DNA to begin with. That is all I can say. So don't forget. Oh, drill sergeant. Thank you. That makes more fucking sense than the sergeant. Jesus. I'd like to say that one was because I didn't sleep, but no, I, that one, that was just me. Okay. Listen. He went from, I work for the defense. Even that first story was ridiculous. I work for the defense and Dylan reached out to me, a fellow trans to share her story because she's restricted from the gag order to uh, now I am Brian's blood relative along with Einstein. My father was best friends with chief Fry, chief Fry's papa. My father was also investigating chief Fry. My uncle Dave was an orthodontist. My cousin Nikki was the cop. My uncle, cousin Randy somehow had his hand in the cookie jar with the real estate um, money laundering scheme and uh, everything, everything. And now Justin is set to testify because this entire thing has to do with him. Okay. How? How did he... How, how did he just weed it? How? He literally just Kimball weeded his ass along all the way up until the witness stand. How? All the way from the comment section, he Kimball weeded his ass all the way to court. You guys, what is up with these people? <laughs> He's putting himself there, but Kim isn't. Thank you, Watsy Obsession. I know you didn't alive in this, but I am dying to know what you think of the ABC Kim who appeared on the Paramount session. Uh, like what do I think of Kim. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, or the kid they put on there that people were, I think, confused about who it was. Remember there was some uh, controversy. Is that what she's meaning? I mean, the ABC Kim who appeared. Like the Kim that was in the cyber sleuths. Is that what she's asking? I think so. Like just like like seeing her face? Is that where what you're asking? Uh I don't know. So I'm waiting for her to see. Um, like if she, if she's meeting the person that they had actually on there. Because there's been some controversy where people felt like they were they thought it was a different Kim, you know? We've heard we've heard that said. I just want to make sure I understand because, like, when I read the air quotes of that, like the ABC Kim, that's yeah. what makes me think that. Oh, oh thank you, oh. Riddler. Melissa G. I appreciate your integrity. Enjoy your channel. Awesome mods and members in chat. I smash that thumbs up. Gotta go. Bye, all. Thank you so much, Riddler. That's <laughs> the obsession. I want to know about what you think about that whole deal, like Kim in general. And, and thank you so much. You guys are very, very kind. I very much appreciate it. So thank you. Um, I think I always thought there is a Kim because we were, we verified a long time ago. There is a, and I don't want to say her full name, but there is a Kim that lines up that has children that goes to that sister school, um, with the names that they have. And it was always the story that was not verifiable. Now, when I saw her face, my initial reaction was, that's not the photo I saw. Hey, Michelle, that's not the photo I was shown. Now, in my mind, I was like, maybe it was a really, really, really old photo. But now, 
because I told you guys I'm working on receipts behind the scenes. I was actually just last night shown of that photo. At least one of the photos she used was not was of somebody else. So I don't. And now I like I'm being told. That there's two Kims, that there's two Kims. So I don't freaking know. I don't know. And Kim apparently admitted that there's two Kims. So I, to this day, don't know what the hell to think. I don't know if this woman is the legitimate Kim and there's the tiniest little truth to her story that she Kimball weeded into what she turned it into or like she... Uh, I think a lot of people were just shocked she was on there, like, in general. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. Melissa? Like, mm -hmm. she just, she's up there, and it's like, oh, hey. But then I think it kind of goes along. Oh, hey, Dot. What's up? Um, but I think that, uh, to be honest with you, I think that it goes along with the storyline that I believe that series was kind of a bit of a hit piece. And I think it could go around that aspect of like, you know, see what the social media, like true crime community is doing. This is wow. This is rampant, you know, versus, um, you know, believe mainstream media. I don't know. I mean, there, I have so many thoughts on it, but it was weird because they, they talked about all like, or some of the conspiracy stuff, but they just didn't seem to show a lot of different credible, I'm not going to say different credible, but other creators that have credibility in the community and may have been of help in other cases as well. And and there could be benefits there, right? Or I don't know if I'm explaining that right, Melissa. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And Kim, yes, Anyanka, Kim is directly connected to Olivia. Kim originally did, well, it wasn't the, her first sit down interview was on Chronicles of Olivia and released and Kim said the only reason she did the Paramount series was because Olivia asked and she will do anything that Olivia asked and Kim's direct uh well indirect line uh to the Gonsalveses was through Olivia and any information she wanted to get to the Gonsalveses she would give through Olivia Mm hmm. But apparently Kim said on Drunk Turkey show that there's two Kim, like there's another Kim. Yeah. That whole situation is kind of weird. <laughs> it's, it's very weird. This is what I'm saying. It's all weird. What's my thoughts on Olivia? <sighs> I think Olivia um, has an amazing ability at creating uh, videos. Like she has, she's, her quality of content uh, as far as editing um, and producing is amazing as far as vetting and credibility not so much um i think when you rise really quickly it probably is a struggle of oh you know like especially with true crime like it probably is a struggle juggling Oh man, like learning. And I think she probably did rise really quickly and, and everything came really fast. And so I don't, I don't know if maybe she just didn't do things right because it all happened fast or if she, I can't speak whether her intentions were bad or she just grew too fast and didn't know what she was doing, you know, like, and maybe 
like a lesson learned. I don't know, you know, like I can't speak on that, but I think her quality as far as just like the production is really good. I just don't agree with the stuff she puts out. I mean, I question is it about getting to the story the quickest or what the, um, I don't know how you call it, like kind of like feeding the monster, you know, like what people are looking for in terms of content that they're not getting. I, I have a lot of questions on why certain decisions have been made and things have been done the way they've been done. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. All right. Well, here, I'll pause on this for a second. So, all right. Put a one in the chat if you guys are familiar with the creator Harsh Reality. Because, like, before yesterday, yes, I, I've heard the name Harsh Reality, but I was not familiar as far as like, I, I didn't know his channel and watched his channel. Okay. There's a lot of ones. Okay. So I've definitely heard Harsh Reality's name thrown around quite a lot, especially surrounding this case. Now, if you take a look at Harsh's channel, he's definitely putting out a lot of content, to say the least. Um, How many videos does he have total? Do you know? Well, let's see. Okay of videos like total yeah what does it say up there 1.4 1. 1. 4, thousand but he has 74.9 that he's about to have 80,000 subscribers he has a very big subscriber base but we have 11 hours ago idaho four one day ago idaho four one day ago idaho four two days ago idaho four two days ago idaho four three days ago idaho four Five days ago, Idaho four. Oh, five days ago, Idaho four. Seven days ago, Idaho four. Eight, eight days ago, Idaho four. Nine days ago, Idaho four. Nine days ago, Idaho four. Ten days ago, Idaho four. Eleven days ago, Idaho four. Twelve days ago, Idaho four. Two weeks ago, Idaho four. Two weeks ago, Idaho four. Like how you know? Like this is day after 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 day. I didn't realize that there were people posting like this and look right here. Even today's, we have Brent Kopaka's face right there. Daily content in short video format will grow your channel quickly. That is true. That is a hundred percent true. Um, that is a lot of content on the Ido for with out new information coming out. But what I <laughs> Vendi, Vendi says, I guess I mean I admire his commitment to content. I can't even upload one video a week. Touche. Hey ATS News. Um well well what I'm curious about is that you know since Brian Witt like since Brian waived his right to a speedy trial, there isn't really new information coming out, right? He was promoting drip drop while he was going after Kopaka and Darren too. Got it. So we see Brent Kopaka uh, on today's video. And anybody who isn't uh, familiar with who Brent Kopaka is, Shay, you want to explain who Kopaka is? Sure. Uh, Brent Kapaka um, was in his mid-30s. He is a 
He was a former um, military service member. He suffered uh, PTSD significantly um, and lost a lot of of his service members when he was overseas. Um, he had moved to Washington to be closer to his mom and he was really struggling. He lived with a couple of roommates. He kind of kept to himself in his room. He had an episode one night um, where he was trying to address stuff with his roommates. Um, then he, um, in what I would call like maybe a mental health breakdown, it, re it required SWAT to, um, go in and have to, to an uh, officer had to, to remove Brent from the search, unfortunately. So where they're at right now, because it's an officer involved shooting, it's under investigation, there's a lot being looked into it. Um, some of the stuff that like we got from our interview with Darren was like how his phone was wiped and there was just a bunch of questions that kind of came about it. Now we don't know why that is. It could be other information this man had Maybe being in the military could have really been, you know, struggling with what he's seen over there. Um, I married to uh, a Navy man, and then also my ex was a Marine. And knowing a lot of, you know, different friends of theirs who have gone over and lost a lot of people within like their units or things like that, you know, having PTSD coming out of that is not uncommon. So um, that's really what happened. It wasn't on campus. It was an, it was at an apartment complex. And so to what we know to this day, like, you know, he didn't know these girls from I know for it was separate. It was on December 15th when this happened and it caused a lot of panic. And I think because Pullman's so close to Moscow, a lot of people thought that uh, maybe Brent was connected to this. So there was a lot of creators that went out and ran with it. Did at one point, did I think it was suspicious? Absolutely. Uh, but when you got more details about it, the least likely I thought that was. There was a lot of rumors around that he was a um, tech person at the U of I, which was not true. Um, and they just kind of went on and on and on from there. So our interview, with, I believe, with Darren was uh, really kind of telling more about who Brent was as a person. But it's sad that, um, you know, his family's trying to grieve, but the rest of the world is trying to connect him to a um horrific crime that there that there seems to be of no connection that we've ever seen or been told of and then a lot of people also comment about the rumors of why like moscow pd and other um other local law enforcement would be there with pullman but they needed additional resources they used the drones from the moscow pd to help um in in this in this situation so I just thought that was also worth telling because I've seen some people mention that, like why Moscow was called to help and they offered their drones to, to take a look at the situation. I believe that the apartment was like on the third floor and it was like a really big standoff in the middle of the night. And they like evacuated all the kids that lived there. And it was technically already during Christmas break. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't know if that's too lengthy, but no, that's the, the, the kindest way I can explain it. And people um, really very much heavily ran with the conspiracy and associated uh, Brent Kopaka and, and what happened with his death to the Idaho murders. Again, I think this kind of correlates to what we were saying as far as people were starving for answers and they were really willing to go with anything and they were willing to tie in Brent Kopaka and the fact that it was local. Um, and even if you had some questions with the way things went down with Brent, um, it, there really wasn't anything that tied it into the murders at all. Um, and we even had Darren, you know, Brent's best friend on this channel to try to calm that down because people were even accusing Darren of, uh, being involved and, but people, you know, ran with what they ran with. If anything, we tried to highlight PTSD and how severe of an issue and that, you know, it's a very real thing and we need that our, you know, former military members um, and people who have served our country that they need health care and services and it's a real issue, but, you know, people just whatever, but we've never entertained it here, but 
point is, is that it's disheartening to see that it's still being used push. Like it's still being used in thumbnails. It's still being used for clicks and views. And, uh, but yeah, so that's who Brent is. Um, but, but, mm -hmm. if I, but if asked, like, do we believe Darren? I mean, I, I think there's parts of what Darren shared that confused me a little bit more. Um, but that may just be more of the information around what happened there. I still don't think that it's associated with the Idaho crime, mm -hmm. unfortunately. I'm not, no, not going to say it. Fortunately, I don't think it's so, see, but unfortunately, in the aspect that like it's ever been, you know, intertwined together, I think that's what's probably the most devastating about it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said, like, it's okay if you, if you have questions surrounding the circumstances of uh, the SWAT and Brent's death, that's okay. You, that both can be true at the same time, right? Like, you could have those questions and it still has nothing to do with the Idaho murders. Um, but if anything, it should be bringing awareness to PTSD being a real thing and our, you know, former military members needing healthcare and services, but either way. So what I want to bring your guys' attention to is, do you guys remember here? You know what? Hold on real quickly. This comment, remember what I said? Remember this later? It was this comment of Justin's. And I said, remember this later? Right here. Let me pull it up real quickly. This comment, when I screenshotted it. Wolfie, are you still here? Right here. This. Right here. The murders were filmed. Yes. The memory card from the GoPro is in safekeeping with the defense. Every single Greek knows every single detail, but have lawyered up under the Greek code of silence. Wolfie, can, do you have the date of this or is it my screenshot? Quinn absolutely plays a role in this. He's a known liar. Okay. Now I want you to look at this title. Wow. Did people pay to watch the Idaho four murders? This is from yesterday or two days ago, two days ago. Oh my gosh. But that's not it. Okay. That, that comment from Justin is from last year at some point, last year at some point. Okay. This video is from harsh two days ago, except that narrative is also being pushed within those emails I've been telling you guys about at the beginning of this live. I think this is all intertwined and connected there. It, it, this is all being sourced back to one June 20th, 2023. Thank you. So that comment of Justin was June 20th, 2023. And yes. Okay. So it says 15 hours ago. So it would have been the same day, June 20th, 2023. This was two days ago with harsh. And the emails are saying the same thing. Hmm. So let's listen to a little bit of this video with what harsh is saying. And then we'll go through some of what the emails say. Of about six dollars, and the, and it was just a timestamp. It was just a timestamp. Well, now we don't know the accuracy of these things. We don't know whether all of these things were done to offer little little hooks that Pete would latch onto. And you know, we've heard some stories. We've had some people come out. They've all had things to say about the I know four K. They love it, don't they? Absolutely love it. Let me just do this. Um, just to remind you, smash that like button or I'll smash you in a nice way, of course. A subscribe, a like would be things that kind of make you think that this does hold some weight. Not All right. So he's setting it up like, you know, 
listen, I know this sounds a little bit out there, but there's these things that, you know, make you go, hmm, maybe this does hold some weight, okay? As far as did people pay to watch the Idaho Four murders? 400 people. 400 people, okay? And the thumbnail of this video says 400 people watched. That makes you click click on, right? The thumbnail has the, the victims of this case, and it says 400 people watched. 400 people watched. Is there something about what they're getting from, like, or, like, I heard something... Was it on Drunk Turkey's interview with Kim about like Anne wanting to like have 400 witnesses? Is that where he's getting mm -hmm. it from? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Or, 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 thank you, Jack. It, or is there more? Or does it all, all right, I'll let it play. Is it something as simple as that? Or tie in. Justin's comment and then the email we're about to go through. And Kim is connected to Justin and the email, the people behind the email. It's the same people pushing this stuff. Thank you so much, Jack, though. And congratulations. If you just got gifted a membership, please make sure that you thank Jack. Um, and congratulations to our newest members. Thank you so much, Jack. It all, it's all coming from the same place, Shay. Because again, on these email chains, and I've been getting these emails from the beginning of my coverage. And you could see, because it's not just like a direct email to me, it's a chain to like me and 15 other creators. Yeah. And I so like I you. had the, I've, I think I've shown you some before. Yeah. Yeah, so I've had the choice of, hey, do I want to kind of like, you know, like run with this? No, because when I say it's some heavy shit, it's some heavy shit, guys. So the thumbnail is 400 people watched with these victims' faces on it. And wow, the title, wow, did people pay to watch the murders? All right, well... Only were there the odd little Venmo payments. Again, they could have been, there could have been something. Else. It could have been nothing. It could have been nothing. It could have been for a bit of food. It could have been just someone setting something up for people to latch onto early doors because they knew that it looked fucking bizarre, especially with the timestamps. Who knows? Who knows? But, 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 but. And Taylor had made a reference to there being four hundred witnesses. Four hundred witnesses, and people lost their mind. But it very quickly dissipated. It kind of said people was like, "Oh, four hundred witnesses," and then people forgot about it. The 400 witnesses, it kind of, when you hear people like, you know. Here's one thing you need to do before you buy anything oh, sorry, online. my premium lab. Don't sorry, spend guys. another dime on Amazon. Santa, talking about the complexity of this case, how complex it is. Complexity in a case like this, there shouldn't really be any complexity. The complexity is in the investigation and getting to the person who you feel did the crime. But once that's got, if you've got all the evidence, then the complexity thing then goes off, especially like some people are, are hell bent on believing that Brian Koberger did this crime, let's not forget. And they're basing that off of, they feel that his car was seen in the vicinity of the property. His they're basing that off of, they feel his car was seen at the vicinity. Now, listen, listen, I am very well aware that it is possible law enforcement can lie to you. I, I'm, I know that there is a thing called corruption. I am a conspiracy channel too. I will be the first one to tell you that they, they can and will lie to you. Okay. So I'm not going to be here sitting here saying, well, they said it's true. So it is true. I am not one of those sheep, okay? But this isn't, we feel that his car was there. The PCA states his car is captured on footage. We also have the Linda Lane leak. And we see what appears to be his car 
that directly lines up with what the PCA states. So that's not acknowledging the evidence that's within the PCA and leaning more towards, hey, yeah, no, I'm, I'm more inclined to believe he's guilty while acknowledging that there's evidence against him is not, I feel that they have evidence again. No, no, that they have that against him. R right, Jay? <sighs> Uh, yes, I think so. Sorry, I was reading to confirm this 400 witness thing, mm -hmm. which I got now. Can we read it? Go ahead. Sure. Okay, so I'm just going to read an excerpt. This is from Fox News. Um, so it's quoted. It says, the state does not believe it is appropriate to tie the alibi to the jury trial date in this case, a deputy prosecutor told the judge. It frankly causes the state great alarm that the defense is discussing calling upwards of 400 witnesses during the innocence phase when we potentially don't have a full alibi disclosure. That was all in quote. So that was the deputy prosecutor that said that. So the defense was making claims that they were going to have 400 witnesses, apparently, in the innocence phase or whatever. That makes sense. Wait, there was, was a, yeah, yeah. I was just being like told in chat that it was the prosecution that said that. So I wanted to go find a quote of like, was it the prosecution saying that or the defense? But yes, the prosecution said that about the defense calling 400 witnesses and upward of that they claimed. That's all. Huh. <sighs> DNA was found at the scene of the crime, and there's phone evidence, albeit incomplete, evidence that would suggest that there's a potential that his phone was not connecting to towers at the time of the crime, or at the time that they are claiming that the crime happened. There's a lot of little things in the background as well, such as we feel that there's um, a potential for Bethany Funk to hold exculpatory evidence, um, which is bizarre in itself. We know that early on that there was talk of the filming group with the camera set up that could, may or may not have picked up someone running away from 1122 King Road at around, I think it was 1 or 2 a.m. And again, the mention of the 400 witnesses, Steve Gonsalves as well. Steve Gonsalves coming forward and saying that something gross would be coming out. Wait, who? Who said? Who? Steve Gonsalves coming forward and saying that something gross would be coming out. Steve Gonsalves came forward and said something gross would be coming out? See, I'm, I'm really just over the creators speaking with victims' families. I, I, it's, it's with this specific case. Good night, MK. I think it's gotten very, very messy, very, very blurry. We can't rely on anything anymore. Mm -mm. Everybody is jelly bean, you know. Um, here's the thing. Numerous people have, have spoken to Steve on all different sides. I, I don't have to agree with Steve talking to all these people. I don't but I'm not going to judge it. I think it's on everybody else to say enough. He's the victim's dad. He doesn't have to be in his right state of mind right now. Everybody else is. Everybody else is. Enough. Because everybody else is on opposing sides. I wasn't quite as simple as harsh was texting Steve. Steve says a little different. I wasn't, 
I wasn't quite as, I'm sorry, I don't understand. It wasn't quite as simple. He had a whole Steve message me nothing burger. It's, mm, 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 mm. he reached out to see for absolutely no reason and then leaked the car. Really? Which video is that? See, this is what I'm saying, though. Like, and it's very much with this case, with this specific case. Oh, Jesus. I don't know why Steve's answering everybody. I don't know. I, I, I think it's a bad move, but he's not. He's in a not in his right state of mind. Again, I do not say that in a minimizing way, not in a minimizing way. That's what I would anticipate. He's in a horrible position, horrible situation. Nobody deserves to be in that, that position. We are all in our right state of mind. Well, we should be in our right state of minds. Stop making selfish choices. You guys see what's going on. Stop reaching out. Stop it. For what? Brian waived his right to a speedy trial. What 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 more do you need from this man? It's taking advantage at this point. It really is. It's taking advantage to continuously reach out. Enough has been leaked. I would be honestly with as much that's been leaked out. I would be surprised if something isn't at this point going to affect and hinder this, this investigation and trial. I would be shocked if something already isn't going to mess us up. Step back. Cover it. Cover the case. We can cover the case. We could discuss it. It's, it's when you get directly involved. Because when you have this, because not only are you have this open line of communication, are you feeding the, well, listen, I, I think there's a possibility that 400 people watched your child's murder. Are you feeding that line of communication? Th this is like, it's beyond out of control, guys. Now, like it is said in Murder Metal Mayhem's video, the, the, when Steve Gonsalves says gross, you automatically go down different rabbit holes as to what he could mean. He could have been talking about the injuries sustained. He could have been talking about some of the things that was going on in the house. But there would be nothing more gross than potential that this was straight. Were you recently oh God, injured in a car accident? I'm not Look at this check for $160,000. There was just an ad right there. In some manner. But look, I don't think that's the only option with regards to what would generate 400 witnesses. I do feel that what that would potentially do if this was the case and there was 400 witnesses that had seen something on video, there's a potential that that would explain why everybody's so damn quiet about everything. Nah, but let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, buddy. <laughs> if there was 400 fucking witnesses that saw something, that shit would have been heard about already. You, th you think 400 fucking people saw something and you think that makes sense why we heard nothing? If 400 people saw something, we would have heard something. That, are you, do you not know if... <laughs> If two can keep a secret, one of them is dead. Literally. You like, no, 400 and we heard nothing and that's logical to you? No. 400 and it hasn't been leaked? You're telling me 400, it was live streamed and it, it hasn't been leaked? No. Come on, guys. I, listen, I love a good conspiracy just like the rest of you, but logical. Let's be logical here. I don't like a conspiracy that damages 
the victims' families. I don't like a conspiracy that isn't based on actual thoughts that make you go, oh shit, like that, that literally could be legit. Come on. Why? Like why? 400 people and we haven't heard a damn word for one of them? Give me a because like this is just silly yeah it's it's very sensationalized i i used to watch some of harsh's stuff like hearing like active cases but um yeah he seems to kind of like just grab whatever's out there you know the loving fruit rumors whatever because it's a video a day a video a day is being dropped on this stuff no three he usually does three two to three videos a day (sighs) that's like his norm while in communication with the victim's family Mm, 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 mm. like people turn around and they've said oh it's hard enough to keep one person quiet let alone keep you know 400 people quiet right but i think on the contrary if there's a mass if there's a video going about or or pictures going about of some description, um, then would people want to bring attention to themselves? Delphi. Yes. It gets out. What, What do you mean? All it takes is the one asshole. Would people want to bring attention to themselves? 399 can say no. And then there's that one George. Fucking George. 399 could be keep our mouths shut. Don't say a word. And then there's fucking George. And George fucks it up for everyone. You can't control George. George. George drinks a couple of beers and George fucking runs his mouth and George ruins it for everyone. You can't control George. Everyone has a George. Like, (laughs) and out of 400 people and you don't even think there's a a second George. You don't think George and George Jr. are going to get together and George it up. (laughs) Stop it. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, George is why we can't have nice things. It's oh, like, my God. Oh, my God. That, you know, Jennifer Heine Hill, that's a good point, too, because they aren't held. And I don't, I'm not educated on what the laws are, but we we do have different laws. Yes, I've, I just don't know what the laws are. Um, But this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous for crying out loud. And get kicked out of the university, for instance. If they went to parents, what would the parents do? Would the parents advise their children to go public with what they know? Or would they be... Kim W.S.U. Mom. Oh, my God. I don't know. Let's look at what examples we have here. Look at Kim WSU mom, right? Let's go by what we see right in front of our eyes. Kim, the parent, right? The alleged parent of somebody who who is part of the Snapchat group who knew about the murders prior, whose daughter's home was used as the alibi for Jack D and, and Adam. And she is singing from the panel tops. So yes, Miss Miss Ma'am Kim over here isn't saying keep your mouth shut. She's Georgian it up. She's Georgian it up. <laughs> sorry. Did you see Black Thorns comment to you? No, I'm sorry. 
right. They said they sent you an email. It's harsh reality's explanation for taking the video down with Steve and his conversation. It got a YouTube privacy complaint. Oh. Allegedly. See, Ali says, see, for me, I want my true crime to be true, logical, but ultimately true. Amen. And you know what, Allie? It's respectable. That's why when people refer to your channel, they respect it. Kim I makes over 20 alts on YouTube. She's talking times 20. Yeah. Sorry, Shay, go ahead. I want to ask lots of question. I don't know if she was in chat earlier, but I know she has her connections with the Sigma Chi guys. And I was curious because she said I know. she watched Shay, the Shay loves Watts in a session. I do too, but Shay, Shay, Shay loves Watts. I do love me some Watts. I don't get to watch all the lives sometimes in, re in real time, but I'll replay. But um, so Watts, what I was curious of is did by chance your Sigma Chi contacts the story that Dave put out on Cyber Sleuths, where he says that those Snapchats disappeared out of the met metadata. Do, what are your thoughts on that one? And two, I'm curious if by chance that could be debunked by the Sigma Chi guys. I know it's a reach, but I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. You get where I'm going with that, MJ? Yep. I'd like to know that too, especially covering Dave on my next episode. I'd love to know. And and, and I think Kelly's been, which is what's the obsession, I think she's been very um, careful. Oh, well, yeah, yep. she's been very careful and cautious with the people she talks with. And I don't feel like she's like exploiting their story mm -hmm. at all as much as she's trying to protect the families. I haven't talked to them about the metadata and there is more. I'm super interested. I know. Maybe. I'm just, hmm. I'm, just I'm, I'm just really curious because that, that part right there really kind of gets at me. I'm so sorry, Kelly. They're they're put out a statement about Dave specifically, and that narrative has a whole, you likely know what they think in general. Maybe we could talk privately, what's the obsession? Hmm. I think I know what she's talking about. Okay. Sorry, I don't mean to derail you. Keep going. No, you're fine. Okay. Parents advise them to keep their fucking mouths shut. I think the last... Okay. Parents are going to advise all 400 of the kids to keep their fucking mouths shut. But not, not, not Kim. Kim is, hello, screaming from the panel tops. Please, I urge all of you little children to speak out. Except mine. Come on. Flat out, I think parents will tell them to keep their mouths shut. I think if the university has blanket called everybody in and said, look, we know that there's people involved in this. You may have saw pictures. You may have saw videos. I suggest you keep your mouth shut. Um, the police will interview people. They've obviously interviewed. They've said that they've interviewed, what was it, 90 people or done 90 interviews? But look. It may not have been that this was some sort of pay-per-view snuff film, for instance, but what if there was other things caught on camera? What if when they eventually went to the house before law enforcement was called, people were taking photographs? Can we pause that? Mm -hmm. I want to talk about that too, but Watts also gave us a couple of comments too that are worth reading. But I will maybe not put it on the screen. Talked to them since the metadata video came out, Dave, and they didn't mention it. And I don't want to bring it to their attention because it will upset them if they don't know the Paramount cheese is out. Maybe hard to not know. 
they thought they knew who it was initially, but they asked the guy and they were wrong. They know the story is not true. They themselves were at the frat house that morning. Okay. I'm curious, Watts, was your, I wondered if your guys were the ones that uh, are so close to, that are still close to Hunter, the, the triplet. Which I don't want to confuse it with this, but whenever I was like going back and watching some interviews um, around the year anniversary, and they, you know, they interviewed like the Chapin family, which was so like just touching, but they did an interview with some of the Sigma Chi boys, and it was around um, the scholarship fund that they gave out. And I just thought it was really, really touching all the nice things they had to say about Ethan. I am my own grandpa. And they can show that they were up between 9.30 and 9.45 a.m. And one of them was nearly immediately out and about. And there was no activity around 11.22 King. Boom. So they de they are close with Hunter and, yes, the chief and family. So are they debunking the narrative? Mm. Mm, 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 mm. George, 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 George. I'm going to stay on mute for a minute because I got to get my dog and we've got a storm coming in. Okay. I'll be right back. All right. Well, Mr. Harsh over here is saying there's a possibility that Maybe it wasn't a snuff film. Guys, I have been in touch with them since about two weeks after this happened. They are now friends. They are solid young, young adults. I believe he wants the obsession. I think I, I'm, I'm forgetting what the narrative is, though. Because now I got lost. Or I'm just really tired because I pulled an all-nighter. Um, yeah, that was a great video, Pickle. I remember that one. So... Maybe it wasn't a snuff film that over 400 people saw, but when friends first got there and they, before 911, and they took Snapchats or they did this, he's about to say, again, you're telling me not one leaked, not one person took a screenshot of the Snapchat or a screen recording, 400 of them? Effectively, they can debunk this crap narrative that is so hurtful to the families and friends, so hurtful to think people believe all these kids knew and let the victims, oh, you're about to make me so happy, seriously. <sighs> For real. It's so validating. Oh, Allie, I couldn't do an all-nighter like that anymore, but, like, I raged through my all-nighter. My fingers hurt. That sounds wrong, but, like, from typing. That's what I'm saying, Peter. Like, and not one of them screenshotted it. Not one of those screenshots leaked. Not one of them have text messages, even outside of that Snapchat group where they were messaging with friends about it. Nothing. That would have gotten out long ago from a George. It is, and still doing it. You think so? What, the murders themselves? Oh, yeah, I got the one eye. Okay. 
or taken videos of inside the house. And how many people did that then get out to? We, we've been kind of told that there was potentially a conversation on Snapchat and that had kind of exploded around sort of 8.30 to 9 o'clock on that morning. It's not beyond the realms of possibility that there is a video. No. Dude, does he have an ad every two? Living Sorry, my, my premium lapsed temporarily, so I'm not used to ads. But is there an ad every 30 seconds? Because this is crazy. Being should ever eat processed food for every single meal of their life. What in the world? That they that is insane. Is some degree of footage somewhere, whether it be photographs, whether it be a video. It's just, what was that of? Yeah, listen, I could tell you if there was, it would have been leaked. When you're dealing with the amount of people you're dealing with, there would, there would have been a leak by now. You're talking about. 400 and not a leak not a single leak college students not boomers not older generation 400 in the prime of social media not a single leak i'm shocked that there hasn't even been a fake leak with the way this is going What was it of, and what did it capture? Who started it? Who was the who was the first person to generate that video? We know no one. How about that? There's protected people in this. We know there's a lot of things that are being hidden, um, gag order wise. You know. Oh, here's a recap. Did you get my message? Yes, thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll be right back. I gotta reset my internet. One second. And thank you, Huda. And I apologize if I'm not pronouncing your name right. Huda led a mental health and crime. Thank you so much. They said, I have a clip from ABC News, did an exclusive interview with Kaylee's friend, Eva. She said, I thought it was an accident. She didn't answer. I remember that. I do remember that. And thank you so much. I appreciate the super chat. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Nick, too bad for you. No longer able to be an asshole to you because you're green. <laughs> um, so Watt says, I haven't talked to them about the metadata and there is more. They're put out a statement about Dave specifically and that narrative as a whole. You likely know what they think in general. I've talked to them since the metadata video came out, Dave, and they didn't mention it. And I don't want to bring it to their attention because it will upset them. If they don't know the Paramount cheese is out. They thought they knew who it was initially, but they asked the guy and they were wrong. They know the story is not true. They themselves were at the frat house that morning and they can show that they were up between 930 and 945 a.m. And one of them was nearly immediately out and about and there was no activity around 1122 King. They are close with Hunter and the Chapin family. Guys, I have been in touch with them since about two weeks after this happened. They are now friends. They are solid young adults. Effectively, they can debunk this crap narrative that is so hurtful to the families and friends so hurtful to think people believe all these kids knew and let the victims but there's but their point is to specifically to debunk these crazy i'm sorry crazy bitches but to balance the energy of this case in the public eye with some actual truth and heart right Potentially, well, and that's what it said, is potentially 400 witnesses. Potentially. Right, yeah, opinionated. Or, you know, like, and again, 
Um, if the snap, like, let's say if it was in a Snapchat group, if the Snapchat themselves didn't leak yet, um, no, but I think I remember her saying that she tried to reach out at 10 a.m. I like, cause I remember and thank you, Huda. I remember when that first came out, because I remember it was all like, wait, 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 10 a.m., 10 a.m. I remember, but then I remember it was cleared up. If I if we're talking about the same thing, I remember because it was like, whoa, wait, wait, what at 10 a.m.? But and I remember when we got like the full context, it was she tried to start calling at 10 but there was no answer, but she didn't find out until later. Yes, you. They only speak out because these lies and rumors are so hurtful to the Chapins, the other families, and it's insulting to the guys that they knew and they didn't help. Yes, Watts. I know. I freaking, it's hurtful to everything, Wattsy obsession. Like, it's hurtful to, like, listen, this is the way I see it. Everyone is so selfish because there's one truth. There's one story. That is the only thing that matters. Do not ever claim to be after the truth. Don't ever claim to be speaking for these victims. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter my theory, your theory, if it ends up being right, wrong, complete opposite. It's their story. Whatever happened, happened. That is all that matters. And it's uncovering that. And what, if you're doing anything that is discrediting what happened, what the truth is, like, that's so beyond messed up. It really is. Because it's their story. It's not our story. It's their fucking story. It's their truth. And you're blurring it and you're muddying it. Stop taking away their truth. They're friends immediately because that's what they would have done, of course. That is what any person in the range of normal psychology would do. Right. P like, that's what I'm saying. Like, all social media, they're making it about themselves. You guys are making it about yourselves. Stop making it about yourself. It's not about us. It's them. And if you keep, like, muddying the waters, you guys are going to make it to where we're never going to know their truth. Don't do that to them. If you keep throwing shit in there... All right, just like imagine like a like a pool full of water. If you keep throwing shit in there, you're going to keep muddying it to where we can't see it. We can't see through that water because you're making it filthy. Stop making it dirty. We need to be able to see through it. That is a horrible analogy, but seriously, it stop. Stop doing that. I'm sorry, that was a horrible analogy. That was a horrible, horrible analogy. But for real, I always think about the movie, The Lovely Bones. And, and at the end of that movie, and he's flipping that chest over and he's trying to throw it into the, the whole land, like land hole, landmine. And she, like she's watching because her body is in that trunk and she knows that as soon as like he gets it in there and buries it, that's it. Nobody's going to know the truth of what happens to her. <sighs> that's so sad. Like, cause like, that's how I imagine it. Like you have to, in order to get justice for these victims, in my opinion, in order to truly get justice for a victim, you have to know their truth. And yes, you can hold the person accountable. Like Letitia Stout, like, this is why I can't ever let go of that case. Yes, Letitia is, in my opinion, is the correct person accountable for Gannon's murder. 
but we don't know who, we don't know what happened to Ganon fully. And so Ganon never fully had justice. And so it makes me really, really sad because how do you get this victim full justice when you don't even know their story? Their story deserves to be known no matter how horrific, no matter how sad, no matter how hard it is to hear because it's their fucking story. And with this case specifically, everybody is making it their story. Everybody is making it everything they want it to be. You guys are all being very selfish. You're taking the spotlight for yourselves and it's not about us. Stop injecting yourselves, stealing the spotlight, muddying the waters. It's about the victims. That's it. And we're never going to get the truth if you keep muddying it up. Okay. So. Hmm. All right. There was a creator who dropped the video. Well, all right. Hold on. Let me, let me backtrack for a second. You said, I personally believe that we, and thank you for the super chat. I personally believe that we as YouTube creators need to stop talking to the four victims, his families, and especially the Sigma Chi fraternity boy. Which fraternity boy? Um, see, that's the, that's the hard part. I think with this specific case, everybody needs to back the hell up. Um, I think, just like I said stop reaching out to Steve, you know, like I don't agree with, uh, you know, certain things Steve's doing, but I don't, I don't, I'm not judging him for it. I don't have to agree with Steve. I'm not, I don't want to say I'm not holding him accountable, but I'm not really, I'm not putting it on him. I'm not putting it on him because he's not in, I can't imagine him being in the right state of mind right now. Um, but everybody else I'm holding accountable. Everybody else needs to stop. And, um, Especially we're at, you know, wait for trial. Just wait. Just stop. And it's just way too messy at this point. It's way too messy and we're not doing any good. Okay. Um. I think Princess Gary, yeah, because he's the one who speaks with multiple people. Um, I think the issue that is, though, Huda, like people who l leak things, right? It, you know, like, it's hard. Oh, is she talking about? I thought you were talking about Dave. If Dave's legit. Yeah, Claus. This information being spread with this case even before I dealt with my mom. What the fuck? It's not a good enough reason. No, don't come for Kelly, please. Okay. I don't know where she is, but 
know, it, there's so many things that you don't get to see. Like they, so they make references to if this comes out, people's lives could potentially be in danger, so on and so forth. Gag orders of this nature, this extreme, in my opinion, would only be in place to protect something exploding out of control. At this yeah, listen, gags order be gags order being in place <laughs> doesn't necessarily mean that there's a fucking snuff video out there. It's because of us. Do you not get that? Oh, I yeah, no, I. I get that, Huda. Um, uh, social media playing the role in this case that it does directly plays a role with the non-dissemination order. It's out of control. And so it being as na a national as it is in the spotlight that doesn't mean that it has to have some bombshell. It, it could, you know, like absolutely a gag order. It's a non-dissemination order, but it can mean that it has something big. It doesn't necessarily mean that though. It means that there is a public demand. It means that they're concerned about having the right for a fair trial because it has such big spotlight on it that if there is such an open flow of information, how are they going to get a fair jury like a fair trial for brian doesn't mean that there has to be a fucking video dude this is about control and if you've got to control a situation where there's a potential that a lot of people were involved in potentially seeing something of this nature i think that would potentially warrant a gag order because that's a lot of Things to control. That's a lot of things to go through, a lot of people to talk about, to to ascertain how it got to that stage. Why was that even done in the first place? I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on whether you feel that there is a potential for this to be this kind of situation. I do you think, like I say, a pay-per-view snuff film type thing, I think I feel is 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 a stretch. But you couldn't you couldn't turn around and say that's a hundred percent off the table. You should a paper pew, a paper pew, a paper few stuff. Few. So basically what I see here, and if you guys can't see what's happening is what we're doing is over a year, a year and a half later, what we're doing is we're dropping multiple videos every day about the case to say, yeah, there's a, sh it's a stretch that it's happening, but I made the thumbnail 400 people watched it leading you to believe it happened just to get you to click on as I have an ad every 30 fucking seconds just to tell you that it probably didn't happen what do we, what do we call that what do we call that sir Like, seriously, your thumbnail was 400 people watched? Was this recorded? All to say? It's a stretch, probably not. This, and you're dropping like two, three videos a day? You've done like fucking 14 videos on this this week alone. Oh my god. Certainly couldn't. But I feel that we're kind of on the edge of something that makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense, but because of how far it's gone with it, it's like everything else, the true crime niche. There is some information within the 
Do you know the U.S. solar company's Another nasty little ad. secret? It turns out if you live in New York, they have to get a from these that is absolutely fantastic. The downside is when that gets pushed a little bit too far, the entire niche loses credit. It loses. Wow. Did people pay to watch the Idaho Four murders? That's your title. That's that's your title. Did people did people watch? Did people pay to watch the Idaho Four murders? Did people pay to watch the Idaho Four murders? Are you telling me you created an entire video just to say, nah, probably not? An entire video just to say, eh, probably not? Adds 30 seconds, every 30 seconds just to say, eh, probably not? If you can't see what creators are after, not all, not all. But there are... If you go in the comment section, guys, people, again, people are starving for answers. And so they run with it. They run with this. Let's see what else. Let's see what other videos. Idaho four and three reasons, two things in the Idaho four case that I cannot let go. Steve Gonsalves proves that he's in the dark like us. Did people pay to watch the Idaho four murders? These are facts about the Idaho four case. What do Orthrum labs actually do? Idaho four. New docs and more BS in the Idaho 4 case. Wow, another mainstream media hit piece lying to the public, Idaho 4. Idaho 4 and the significance of the K-Bar. Does this show a monster hiding? Brian Koberger, Idaho 4. Does Ackman's razor point to Brian Koberger? Idaho 4. Chief Fry rewarded for his services to the Idaho 4 case. If the Linda Lane audio is accurate, then the eight hours is not Idaho 4. This is the problem with the Idaho 4 case. Rant Idaho 4 and the damn knife sheath. Idaho 4 could have been a Colorado situation. Brian Koberger and the weaponized gag order. Ashley Banfield attacks Brian Koberger's story again. Why did they have to help Dylan and Bethany? Idaho, Idaho 4 theory with Steve G. Odinist killers in Washington, Idaho 4. Did 1122 King Road really get cleaned up in the eight hour delay? Idaho 4 Reckon or Inside Job. Idaho 4 Paramount plus Garage and The Weirdos. Does this prove someone is lying? Idaho 4. Did Bethany Funk see the killer? Idaho 4. Will Bethany Funk ever have to reveal exculpatory evidence? New Docs and the Undeniable Control of Moscow. Idaho 4. Why did Kaylee and Maddie call Jack 10 times Idaho 4. The real issue with the Idaho 4 DNA story. The plan protect Idaho at all costs. What the fuck? Prosecution argues change of venue in Brian Koberger. Brian Koberger, crimes of passion. Richard Allen and destroyed evidence. Delphi in Idaho 4. Will Ann Taylor help seal Brian Koberger's fate? Idaho 4. 1122 King Road was knocked down, but this weren't. Why weren't the survivors left at 1122 King Road, Idaho 4? 
The enigma that is in Brian Koberger, Idaho 4. The supposed story of Brian Koberger's crime, Idaho 4. Breaking change of venue requested by Brian Koberger. The journey of Brian Koberger. Doc drop. How does Brian Koberger still not know this? Is Brian Koberger being played by Idaho 4? Did the Consolvices interview raise more issues with Idaho 4? Why does Dylan and Bethany get a pass but Jordan doesn't? Idaho 4. Oh my God. Vill Vinnie Bolton, Gray Hughes, and the Lena Lane. Idaho 4. And I'm still only one month ago. Oh my gosh. Dude. Whoa. And I'm only still as of one month ago. Are you? Are every video like the one that I just watched where you drop a video and make people believe that the murders were live streamed and had 400 people watching just to say, eh, most likely not, but maybe? Just to pull in fucking ad revenue? That's sick. That's really sick. And that's what, like, I'm trying to show you guys is that, well, what do they get from that? They get literally what wh he just got money from me watching that video. Bam. Bam that that's it mission accomplished go ahead watch yeah that's really what would you think when you see this Four hundred people watched. Wow, did people pay to watch the Idaho Four murders? And literally, all he said, "Where'd she go?" All he said was, "Eh, it's a stretch. Probably not." A fifteen-minute video to say probably not. But, okay. It's the same thing Justin said. Last summer. The murders were filmed, yes. The memory card from the GoPro is in safekeeping with the defense. Every single Greek knows every single detail but have lawyered, lawyered up under the Greek code of silence. Hmm. Well, there was a creator who went live uh, the other day, or they dropped the video, I don't, I don't know, one or the other. And in that video, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Shay. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> you sounded so cute. My audio. Thank you. <laughs> My audio was messed up and I was having to like do the breakers. We lost power. Sorry about that. You're fine. Okay. So there was a girl, there was a channel who went live uh, the other day and she decided to share one of the emails that she received. I am on this same chain of emails. Okay. This is the same chain of emails that I have been receiving for the entirety of this case. Um, What's the obsession? I'm curious if, if you've also been on the same chain of emails. You guys may have heard the name Clay. 
Natalie from Clay's Computer. Um, and I, what I want you guys to listen to while we go through these, and this is... Um, Do you have the link? Uh, I think I could grab the link from the for, video. That, for which remember? one? <sighs> Ooh, wait, what? Here, I heard, I heard what you were describing, but it was are you talking this, about? It was this video from the other day. Sorry, I've been consuming a lot. No, you're fine. To be fair, I didn't give you the heads up. <laughs> no worries. Um, mm, 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 mm. I don't even remember where. Are you talking about the one Sonia did or? No. You're saying where she read over it? Was it the one you put in Discord? Maybe. Now I don't even remember, man. I just remember what day because I remember where I was. I'll figure it out. Um, there, No, it wasn't Discord. It wasn't Discord. All right. So, yes, you've received many of these emails. Okay. Okay. All right. Because there was a, there was a live the other day who decided to share one of their emails. This is the email they decided to share. I have been on these chain of, you've, you've heard about it too, Shelly. Okay. I have been on these chain of emails. This is, uh, I screenshotted the email that they shared on their live. That's why I'm, I'm going to share the link of the live that they went over it for. Um, thank you, Shelly Bean. Shelly Bean gifted a membership. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to whoever received it. Please make you, th uh, make sure you think. Shelly Bean, if you're the lucky recipient. So, I, absolutely no information within this email that I am going over as in no is accurate. I'm not putting forward that it's accurate. That is why scrolling at the bottom, that's why it states that. But I'm trying to point out to you guys that I have been part of this email chain and I can prove that. And I, I could show you guys so many emails from the beginning that I'm linked on with like 15 other creators. And I showed you Justin, Justin's comment from last year, Harsh's video from two days ago. And then I want to go over this email that this creator just showed on her live and try to see if you could find any parallels. Okay. And see if anything rings a bell with you with anybody else's narratives that you hear them pushing that maybe other creators are pushing narratives that they've been like hearing from emails they're getting. Thank you. Sexy wild thing. McLovin freaking Papa Elvis Claus. She just gifted five memberships. If you are a lucky recipient to get one, please make sure you thank her in the chat. Thrust your pelvic like Elvis in the chat. If you just got one from Claus. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and that's your opinion, Moon Baby. And by the way, I really, really like your hair. Um, I wish I could pull that off. That's your opinion, you know, and I don't really think it's a matter of, well, is there somebody worse, right? Because are we, are we going to sit here and have the argument, well, is somebody doing worse? Well, even if there was, does that mean what he's doing is okay? You know what I mean? I, well, think. I think it's two separate things too, though. Here, like with the thumbnail, there becomes clickbait issues, like yes. with TOS. I sorry, think I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're fine. <laughs> Go ahead and interrupt. 
I think it's, if you're putting out two, three videos a day with no inform no new information coming out and it's clickbait solely for the purpose for money, come on. Because at least, and to be fair, I specifically said when I started, I haven't watched Harsh. Like I only looked into him yesterday. So I, I'm not super familiar with all of his videos. But with that video, it was an entire video to say, mm, probably not, you know, it probably didn't happen. So you just dropped a whole 15 minute video to say it, it probably didn't happen. That is clickbait. That's literally the definition of clickbait. Yeah. Well, and I respect your, your opinion move, baby. And you're entitled to it. And, you know, you're allowed to be here and you don't have to agree. And I totally get it. And I still really I, think, I think people, your hair is awesome. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I think, honestly, move, baby, I hear you. I think people can have different triggers of what bothers them, you know? Mm -hmm. like, like, some people are attracted to, you know, certain things like the thumbnail that could bother them or others that more so they're getting into the content and they feel some type of way maybe about how it's presented or maybe there's stuff that's embellished or lacking thereof. So I think everybody's got kind of like what they feel like is going too far, but I don't think we can deny that, you know, talking with the families probably one-on-one -on -one is a very gray line to walk also the trolls i mean they exist and people just wanted to pretend like it didn't happen but it's there it happened and they're still around moon baby says also he declined the opportunity to chop at the bit with inter interviewing folks directly involved with the case he isn't the shark folks are accusing him of being was he privacy struck and i'm asking was he privacy struck with the video he put about out about Steve and how to take it down. Um, but I'm genuinely asking at this point in the case, when there is no new information coming out, do you feel that putting two to three videos out a day like that, when there is no new information coming out and there are videos like that, do you not feel that that's wrong? Or do you feel like no, that's fine. And if you feel like that's fine, that's your opinion. I've heard that name, Nick. T I may have heard that name from you actually recently. I think I just heard that name from you, uh, but I don't no. think I'm familiar. You've heard it from others, but yeah, we have watched yeah. the Chaos Sector video. I remember oh, okay. you were like, what the fudge? But um, who said, yeah, they're, they said they're not, they don't get worse than Chaos Sector. Is that what it said? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So either way, I've been part of this email chain from the beginning of me covering this case, which was literally... Um, the beginning of, of it happening. I, there was a time where I would take the time to at least somewhat scroll through them. But when I say you'll get an idea of how long the emails are, when I go through this right now, they are very, very long, very, very detailed, but I personally never aligned with what it was pushing, but it was not just sent directly to me. It was not a one-on-one -on -one email versus it was always attached. I could see the other creators it was sent to, um, but it was shared on another live. I will drop the link to the live um, as I'm going through this. And I want you to just try to keep an ear out and just keep in mind if there's any parallels to any other things you may hear on other panels or any other things you may hear another creator pushing or just anything that stands out. And I'm genuinely asking. Um, oh, thank you, MS. Sorry, I can't figure out how to get the memberships on the super phone. Love you, MJ. And thank you for the membership wall thing. Oh, thank you so much, MS. That's very kind of you and very much appreciated. Thank you.
Wow, 25 months. Thank you, just me, for your support. Hi, Sabrina. Okay. So this says, hi, Mama D. And, and the email is from, please cancel my order number, you know, X, Y, Z, da, da. And that's oh, the same. One. Yes. And that's the same. Oh. I, I just got an email today from them. Okay. Um, for what? Gifting, Michelle? Or receiving? Did you I only know receiving. I don't know gifting. Did you say who the creator was? <sighs> Let me grab it from the I know who it is. I can say it if you want me to. If not, it's fine. Well, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> okay. So they were formerly 1111 Tarot. I remember that they came around in the Kylie Rodney case. They did tarot readings. And it seems like they've like transitioned more over to... Um, True crime, from what I could see, it's 11 11 true crime. But um, I, it was hard for me to get through the video. It was just kind of weird. Well, I'm, my point is the email. You know, like that's the entire point is the same narratives that's being the emails, right? Is making their way onto the platforms. And I've been getting these emails forever. And I look at Justin's comment. I look at Harsh's video. I look at how many creators are being tagged. I saw that channel. What's the channel's name again? Tara 11? This is 1111 True Crime. And okay. they were formerly 1111 Tarot. So, like, um, just like you would see the clock, 1111, like Make a Wish. Oh, okay. And so it's like, well, how many creators are potentially looking at their emails and not necessarily doing what this creator did versus reading it and then evolving it into their own. Does that make sense? Yes. And that's why I wanted to go through it. And that's why I wanted to say, okay, take this one, for example, and listen for any parallels. That's why I wanted to do it. So this one is from that channel who, this is what she went over. And it was just like a, two days ago, I think. And it says, this is the, I don't know why it says, please can't. That's literally what it says in my email too. So they mass email all of us and they say they're not into conspiracies, but this case sounds like one. I can't send all the info I have right now. And to you, it sounds like a conspiracy, but you are believing the PCA. All four were attacked over at Linda Lane and brought back to King Road. Some were dead. Kaylee was alive until 7 a.m. And again, I when I'm reading this, this is not being put forward as credible information. I am reading this to show you guys as a, an example of where certain creators are may be getting their information while making videos, okay? So please just don't be mistaken of why I'm going over this yeah. versus showing you what we're getting in our inbox. I've been getting these since probably November or December of last year, since it happened, since I've been covering it. Did you read? Uh, you don't have to read the subject line, but somebody in chat was asking if you could explain it of the email above where it says forward Idaho for. They didn't know what all that meant. Huh? The email subject at the top says forward Idaho for blank supply route for King Road, newer version from Emma talking and I don't know. This speaking. isn't my email. I don't know. This isn't my email. This is hers. So there's some theories that people have around the house that they think that there were substances there. And then um, other people that we haven't seen related to this case, they try to bring in like Emma Bailey and Demetria. So it looks like this is kind of tied that cartel stuff. That's my opinion based on it. What I could do for next, the next slide, the next episode though, is I could compile some of my emails from them and I could show you guys though. Okay. Cause they, they watch my lives too. 
and they will directly respond to my lives. This is what I'm trying to say though. They will watch what I say. Like they may, they'll probably respond directly to what I'm saying right now. Okay. Like they'll directly <laughs> form a response. And if they take that much effort to, and I don't share really that I have the debunking opinion. You know what I mean? And if I have the debunking opinion and they put the effort in that they've put in towards me, can you imagine what they put in for people who've had more of the conspiracy opinion? That's my point. That's my entire point. Okay. So I'll, I'll show you guys some of the emails the next episode. So they say Kaylee was alive until 7 a.m. A military intelligent informant said they used more than one house. She also said, Steve is not who you think he is. You do not know Steve. She said many things. But Emma, because again, Emma, who is innocent in this crime, talked to a small YouTube channel, and what she said is way below about the motive, the king, the drug supply. So this person in the emails is very much pushing, just like Shay, yes, thank you, Shay, just like Shay was just saying, the drug motive, the drug motive, the drug motive. All my Idaho stuff is stuck in my boyfriend's old work email, and he tried to delete it, so please, you know, don't mind the please cancel this order, hence the subject line. Um, anyway, it's dark, deep, demonic, what went on that night. I can send you a big post that explains the latest on the three crime scene scenario, but it's what is believed to have happened. It's nuts. So way below is the drug supply route that allegedly Emma told another channel a few months ago. We learned that about eight weeks or so ago, um, this has been told to Ann Taylor, uh, MPD, and even Shannon Gray to give to Steve. So he knows what is being said and that he can debunk it. I believe this stuff has been given to all of these people. That's the thing. Like, I believe as crazy as all of this stuff is, like, do you not, Shay, like, all it takes is one person to genuinely believe it and send it over. I believe these people are flooded with this stuff all the time. Absolutely. I mean, which is sad. Yeah. I mean, and then I wonder, like, do you get so far down in a case where, like, you just, you're not getting these answers that you resort to more of, like, leaning into all of the misinformation? I mean, I think it's a fine line to walk. I think we, ch we chose to do it a little differently, and I'm not judging others, but. Some of this stuff is really dangerous, in my opinion. Well, hi, Vicky. Is it because it's brought in a whole other set of people that they are associating with with crimes? You know. Mm hmm. So here we go. How many times have we heard about the trafficking narrative? Right. Here it is. The trafficking is going on. FBI involved. There's an operation going on. Drug, human, sex trafficking. Where else did we hear that? Do you remember, Shay? Mm hmm Kim. Yeah. This is why I thought it was important to go through this. Because when I was jumping through that live, I was like, wow, wait a second. <laughs> I'm seeing some parallels here. And I'm really on a mission to try to figure out, are these people all connected? Did they tumbleweed along the way and like kind of like intertwine or what? <laughs> rolling, rolling, rolling. I listened to Kim state multiple times. Trafficking. You guys give me your opinion. I'm genuinely asking, you know, like just make a little mental note. I'm not telling you anything. I'm just saying, make a little mental note. Not only me, million other creators are getting these emails nonstop. So if I'm getting these emails nonstop too, 
and I don't ever respond to them. Like what, how far does it go when you are kind of like going back and forth and, and, you know, Hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of correlations with the stories. It, it is interesting. And, and well, it, I think it's this thing of, it could be one of two things. Is there a group of people that are going out and kind of spreading this or did somebody plant the seed and people are working individually to spread it, you know, and not as a group. Yes, exactly. Now she showed this and I actually just thought this was interesting, like just an interesting thing. Um, And it was an article clip of an article and it quoted, I haven't earned the ability to grieve the way that I want to grieve. Kaylee's father continued. I want to be able to just have justice first. Even more tragic is the fact that Steve revealed his daughter's remains were returned to him and his wife, Chrissy, in an urn days following the quadruple murder in Moscow on the morning of Sunday, November 13th. According to Steve, him and his wife did not learn of Kaylee's passing until they spoke to family members on campus. Now, uh, when I was jumping through the live, when she had pointed that out, you know, like she had just questioned, um, hold on one second. Oh, okay. Sorry. So I I believe she was saying that um, it was almost as if it was not planned, like, you know, like for the remains to come back in an urn. I'm not sure, but it was just interesting. And it was just really sad because I think that, you know, and I can't speak for the families, obviously, but I could just guess that that statement holds true to this day that they could not grieve the way that they want to grieve. I don't think that they're going to be able, sadly, I don't think that they're going to ever be able to grieve the way that they deserve to grieve ever because this case has turned into such a shit show that even if Brian is the guilty party, that it is never going to be settled and rested, if that makes sense. Like, it's never just going to be closure. For the families, or do you mean for the case as a, like, community? Because there's so much, um, I guess, polar opposite sides. I think it goes hand in hand. Okay. Oh, no. The more it's talked about. Yeah. Mm. Because if the, if the public never lets it go and it, all it takes is one person to keep feeding it and sending it and this and that, how is the family ever supposed to have that closure? with such a spotlight case. Um, I think this is my opinion. Unless, okay, let's talk about like, what could satisfy, what could satisfy both sides come a trial because there's got to be some compromise here what if um what if he is convicted okay what if he is the guy but what if they do release more evidence that could satisfy 
the a polar opposite side, like an informant, maybe somebody who is in the car or I don't know, just something that has been part of somebody else's theory. Do you think people would ever really be able to kind of come to some type of satisfaction that these four victims receive justice? Or is it more so that people want to be against the grain? It's not Brian whatsoever that they're more so on his side and it doesn't become about the victims anymore. I know I'm kind of all over the place, but I got like a lot of thoughts about this. Like, would there ever be some like, you know, cool the temperature down for all different views of this case, you know, wherever your theories take you. Right. I don't think, and I said this uh, yesterday on Deeds, I don't think, at least the public, I don't think, even if they, they came out with solid slam dunk evidence in trial, at least they're a portion of the public um, at this point, are confirmation biased and they won't be satisfied because they've already determined that there's a conspiracy, there's something bigger going on and Brian is not guilty. And so they will not let it go. That's worrisome. Yeah. I realized, I told you, I realized that when it was about the time when I got the threat, um, underneath the, the specific person who left the threat to come to my home um, because I did not agree that in the back of the footage, I forgot what the device was, what it was referred to, but it was the device in the back of the cop car that is, they believed it was capable of tapping into uh, telephone devices. What was it called? You remember uh, that? Yeah. I'm, I don't I'm remember getting, what it's called. I'm getting it because I have a screenshot of Cynthia yes. talking about it one time. Yeah. And uh, it was, it, it could have been a very healthy debate, you know, a stingray. Thank you, a stingray. Yes. And um, it was around that time when shit was getting really crazy and it was, and then photos were being, you know, like I was allowing that person to be on my panel and to listen, I have an open mind. I, I really do. And show me your receipts and I will go where the receipts go. And they were convinced that there were, there was a person in this Linda Lane footage where there was a dumpster. And I kid you guys not like there, there was nothing there. There was nothing there. And no matter what we said, no matter, they wouldn't take any other answer besides that. And that's when you know that there's an issue because you can't be biased. Like if you're not willing to be anything else but right, that's a problem because it's not about being right. It's about the truth. And then the same thing happened with in the back of the police car, they swore it's a stingray. It's a device that tapped into uh, this telephone that was able to like erase the data or whatever it was. And then we had people who were more experienced on panel who said, well, actually, no, I'm familiar. You know, like I, I forgot who was on panel that said, you know, like I actually worked in this field and that it looks more like a case for, I think, a gut, something. And he got mad and, and wouldn't have it. And then ended up leaving threats in my comment section saying that he was going to come to my house. And I was like, this, that's when I realized right then and there, nope, it doesn't matter if everything comes out and it shows a hundred percent it is Brian, there's going to be a portion of people that they've already made up their mind. They've already made up their mind. And that's a big issue. That's a big issue. Hmm. So this is my first big like case like this, you know, like, cause you've been around for watts, like, and things like that. So this is, I don't know what the out, like what it looks like on the other side yet. So I don't really know what to say at that point. I'm just taking it all in. 
well, when you come out the other side, <laughs> you look back because people should still do watts every day, Shay. People should do watts every day. One one of the big creators just lost his channel. He just finally got deplatformed. Um, but it's kind of like, wow. Like you look back hindsight, like I can't believe kind of like it was that crazy, you know, like, and I'm yeah. starting to feel that even about this case, looking back, even though it's not done, you know, like, but you know, answers. yeah. Um, but I could see what's happening. You know, I could see it. And um, I don't think it's bad to, I'll actually have really been getting into discussing the Watts case again, um, just because I never saw it on the YouTube side or heard other different theories, yeah, but I'd love to. I've, I think it's super interesting. So I don't think it's bad it to is. talk to talk no. about cases, but like you're right, like in certain maybe everyday content, like that really sucks you in. <laughs> Might mm -hmm. not seem very healthy. Yeah. Well, and that's you're not wrong, Moon Baby, with that, because Moon Baby says respectfully, there's no way to satisfy everyone everywhere. And there there have been too many flies in the ointment at this point. And you're not wrong with that. And like, listen, it's not just like social media right especially like let's say specifically this case um they lied during um the press conferences like multiple times like they could you know they're allowed to but there was so many things that m fueled the conspiracy so at the same time with saying what i just said it's like people had a legit reason to go a bit crazy but it's okay to speculate, but you got to speculate based off fact. And, but what started to happen is people started speculating based off of speculation. And then it started to snowball real quick, but people were so hungry for answers that, and what I, I personally saw is we can't deny that there are people with ill intentions and then there are good hearted people. And all it takes is one or two ill intention, you know, ill intended people who come in with misinformation and then that misinformation spreads like wildfire and you can't, once, once it spreads, you can't go in reverse, you know? Yeah, definitely. Sorry. I was reading Angel's comment. Totally have. Yeah. I mean, hey, I deep dive into stuff like um, my ADHD style. I am like a hyper focused person. Like I am no one to judge anybody. Like when it comes to like wanting answers and like deep diving something like I swear I get mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I think it's it's more so that like um, when are we able to be kind of self-aware and kind of check ourselves like I don't know. I guess like everybody's got their own thing. So just like a viewer, I can choose where I want to go and people can choose whatever they want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. As long as I just hope they're respectful to victims and families and loved ones. Yeah. Okay. So this says Kaylee allegedly was digging too deep into human trafficking and pissed off some powerful people who don't want the money to stop from trafficking. Kaylee and Maddie were both talking too much about drug and human trafficking. This was supposed to be a shakedown to shut them up. And I don't think they were to be killed. That is a word we've heard um, multiple times. Um, someone went nuts and went into overkill. Maybe the Moscow Slayer, ex-seal friend of Brent Kobaka that the CIA lady said was there, but we'd never hear about. Okay. So I'm going to just jump forward again, not putting this out as legitimate information. I'm just trying to pick up the parallels. Um, Moon Baby says, may I ask, what are your thoughts about the recent hearing where Judge John Judge accidentally almost said Kopaka instead of Koberger? Jules recently spoke on it. I love Jules. Um, and I did see her video. I personally, I, I did watch as Judge John Judge went and said co and then Koberger. I didn't, I, and I watched really carefully to see if he went to go do the, you know, like the, p, p, the p, yeah, yeah, the p. 
and I didn't personally see the puh part, but I see where people are saying like, uh, uh, you know, like what, what was that? You know, like, but it wasn't enough for me to go, uh, you know, because it's too close to co burger to like, it, it wasn't enough of a puh. I didn't even see the, like the lips touch and without the lips touching it, it was just a cuh. You know, what do you think, Shay? Yeah, I agree. I didn't think he said it either. I think he was trying to say Koberger, but I also wonder if he was like going to stop his self and say like, you know, Mr. Koberger or something of the sort. Like he like wanted to change how he was going to address him. That's yeah. what I was wondering. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if that was why he paused like right mm -hmm. at the beginning. Yeah. Why is there anybody in chat who feels differently? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think so either, Kelly. Um, I, I looked really close. Me and Shay talked about it. Some we were looking. We were like, "Do we see the p?" p we looked. We did. We we were open minded, but we didn't see the p. p. <laughs> um, I personally thought he was about to say Copaca even prior to. Ooh, really? But that's just me. I appreciate your but. Yeah, no, no. We we look. We tried, and because then we were even like, well, even with burger, we were like, we would see the lips touch for. B but, you know, like, but actually his lips didn't even touch either way. Like it, he just went co, but he stopped before. I, I could see how, if you were just listening, like you might, you might start to think you hear that. But then I think we were just so focused on reading the lips, like from yeah. the get go. Yes, exactly. Mel Mel. Yeah. <laughs> well, I still think. Judge John Judge made a boss ass move, okay? <laughs> because <laughs> he was like, okay, first of all, he's like, listen, I don't want to live stream this trial. He's like, all right, he's like, the, anytime you live stream a trial, it becomes chaos, okay? He's like, look what happened to OJ. Look what happened to Anthony. Look what happened. I don't want to do it. And then everyone was like, crap, you know, like, we're not going to get it televised. This is crazy. And then finally, defense and prosecutions, like, we agree, no cameras. And then the judge turns around. And he's like, nah, I'm going to, I'm going to stream this live on my own YouTube channel. And he mic drops and walks away. And it was like, what? Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second. You led us to believe this whole time. You didn't want cameras in the courtroom. You did not want cameras in the courtroom. Then both defense and prosecution agree. Fine. We're not going to do cameras. And then you're like, just kidding. I'm streaming it on my own motherfucking YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Peace. And it was like, what? <laughs> it, what? Was, it was pretty boss. <laughs> what? <laughs> yo. It was, it was boss, yo. <laughs> Because if you remember back when we covered it, I said, I don't know, guys, I really don't think this judge is going <laughs> to, he, he Rick rolled us. <laughs> I really didn't think this judge was going to let cameras in, man. I really didn't. Yeah. He's like, we will stream it on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're not even there anymore afterwards. So. <laughs> And then he privates it. He's like, it's on my members only. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> Stop it. It's exclusive to his members only. <laughs> Thanks, <Hey>. Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Trial's going to be members only. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's like, I'm going to bank on this shit. He's like, oh I'm going to need God. therapy severely. <laughs> Dude, I didn't expect that. Like, for real. I never expected that. Do you remember reading the documents? He's like, I don't know, man. Like, OJ. He's like, I just don't like streaming. And they <laughs> finally, like, defense and prosecution were like, we were heartbroken as the public. We were like. Join this Patreon. <laughs> I like him. I actually like feel like I he's know. holding them to a timeline. Like he's like, come on. 
I'm buying Judge Judge 50 memberships. Stop. You guys are killing me. No, but it really was like an epic move because he like he threw court TV and shit under the foot. He's like, feet sack up scouts. He's like, <laughs> and he like did you just say up he's up. Up. Comes yeah, he's like shit up street and you know what was a boss move his youtube channel already was established for like a year <laughs> <laughs> he has like a hundred subs <laughs> you're like you oh. prepared for this shit yo oh, oh I love God, it I Oh my god, it was great. It was great. He knew this day would come. He knew it would come. He had hey, Kayson. Oh, fuck. Oh my god, can you play my favorite clip? <laughs> Which one? You know the one I like so much. Drop and roll? No. Oh. I'm going, okay. I'm going to get it. The court one. The clueless one, remember? Oh, it's been... For a while. I'm sending it to you. <sighs> I wonder if it'll strike anyone. I don't know. Okay, mm -hmm. it, back. it was great. He has 20.20k now. Wow. He's a boss. I wonder yeah, if he's he got He's gonna say. <laughs> He's gonna say, he's gonna say, Judge, Judge, Judge is my jeepa. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Man, okay. All right, so bam, what I want you to see is that name right there. Hannah Hudson. Okay. Caden. Those are all names we've seen put out with Justin. They put a hit on the house and the house itself was in a big debt of 70 Seven hundred thousand from trafficking proceeds, and the King House owed the boss, and the boss was JJB. Again, not legitimate. Just what this email claims, and we heard so much about the drug ring. This person saying, Emma said organs were taken to pay back the 700000 debt owed. Where does that sound most familiar from? Hmm. This sounds like a Justin one. But where me. else? But where else did we hear? This is my, like, Kim, where else? yeah, all of them. Like, like, it hurts my head. Like, are they all, like, okay. It, you aren't just any piece of shit troll to make up organ stealing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's why I'm, I'm having a hard time thinking they're separal, separate tumbleweeds. Like, your your one tumbleweed there's no way they both just happen to think of organ you know what i mean like what are the odds well i mean there was the, i still go back to the fortune story can you re refresh our memories oh my gosh there's so much with oh, it. Okay. a lot of the stuff mind. yeah <laughs> I'll grab it. Hold on. It's just a doozy. One second. 
You, you can keep reading that. I'll, I'll grab it. Maddie had to be added to the bodies coming back from Linda Lane at 4.30 in the big black truck. Now, I remember going through my emails that I got from them when the Linda Lane footage came out. Um, because the Linda Lane footage was crazy. Brain hemorrhage, a couple channels then. So that's what I'm saying, Watts. And I, I'm just, I want to reverse and get back to one. Get back to the start. Where, where did it originate? And I remember they were very adamant on the Linda Lane, a lot of stuff happening in the Linda Lane. And it says Maddie being killed at King Road to Linda Lane. Um, it incriminates Demetrius. Um, Maddie flushing drugs. Where did we hear that? Maddie flushing drugs. Okay. I think it was, and let me make this, um, I don't know how to make it. Yeah, I can make, no. Let me make the head on that. No, it's not like that smaller. Maddie, F Rory. Rory was a huge flushing of the drugs rory came out with the freaking tunnels and the flushing of the drugs it was what live one or two maddie i think flushed. it was the mm -hmm. well he came on the scene right away with the JLR thing, where his source was JLR, the Emma Bailey. He was in it from day one. Yep. Right here. Maddie flushed $70,000 in drugs about three weeks before. Zana saved some drugs for Maddie by putting them in a hole in a wall. It fell into the structure of the house. JJB sent d and &E, which is Demetrius and Ethan. I'm sorry, Demetrius and Emma to find the drugs. They couldn't reach them, so the person was pissed. Um, so then they owed the money. Do you see right there, but it was all in vain? You see that top line, but it was all in vain? Yes, I do. Sorry, I was trying to grab these pictures. Does that sound uh, familiar at all? Mm-hmm. Sounds you remember? like Kim's email. So, thank you. I didn't know if you would remember. I'm smarter than your average bear. You are a smart bear. <laughs> Kim... Kim said Maddie was decapitated, but it, it was for a vein. And it never really made sense the way it was written. And this is written, but it was all in vain. It and I don't know, it stands out to me. Mm hmm Absolutely. I'd like to see some of if some of the stuff you got and do um, mm -hmm. some word lookups and like compile it all together and kind of see where everything connects. Like take it all and merge it into a PDF and do find all on it, you know? Yep. That would be fun. Yep. So engaged in a drug, human sex, child ring. Ugh. Okay. I'm sending you all this stuff right now. Crazy stuff. 
I don't even want to go through all of it. You talking to me? No, I'm like just jumping through all this stuff because some was just horrible. Ready? Emma said that the Idaho four were left without their kidneys. What? Uh, excuse? Wow. Okay. This sounds like a similar narrative that we've heard before. Mm -hmm. We've and then it says we've heard they took some of their eyes too and Ethan's tongue and other organs. Well, I can confirm I've been getting these emails for well over a year and other creators have too. Kim has been pushing this and sending emails like this too. Thank you, mm -hmm. MS. Thank you. It's very kind of you. Please make sure you thank MS if you just received a membership. Congratulations. Who who is this group? Who is this group? Six months, Watts. I've been getting them for a long time. What, like, there's the Cody Funk. Dr. Steve Fry. Who did we hear say that name? Uh, from Justin. Justin. Wonder why the eight hour delay? Because they needed to wait, you know, for them to pass to steal body parts. This is literally everything we've heard. Military intelligence informant, Justin. A huge debt. I'm sorry, I don't want to go through all of them, guys, because some of them, you know, like, I don't even want to read because they're so bad. Um, okay, so this is their timeline. It's... I'm really starting to connect them. And like, Shay, we really have to do a call tomorrow because I'm really starting to connect them all. Yeah, I, I'm worried with you. <gasps> oh, what? Hmm. My mind's just going. I'm sorry. I got to get my thoughts on it. I don't know how to express it. Keep moving. Sorry. So this is the timeline, allegedly, right? Banfield is one hour in front. When you take the one hour off everything, it fits in. I don't. I don't know what this even means. It doesn't even make sense. Fits. Everything fits in. Eleven forty p.m. Ethan pays. Jack for a lift to 1122, 1145. Drunk sorority girl causes hit and run outside of BK apartment. 1145 law enforcement at frat party Pullman for a disturbance. Frat boys in fight with BK because he will not be a cleaner. What's a cleaner? Eleven forty six. Brian seen and heard on floor with PC Willis report says he was escorted to ER for drug use. Twelve a.m. Eleven twenty two. Zana has a call with her dad. You guys do remember that twelve a.m. I, I do remember. To be fair, I do remember the report heard. Please 
please don't say that name here. Um, I do remember hearing early on that Zana spoke to her dad at midnight and she was home and they were ordering pizza. Do you guys remember? Yes, ma'am. And then we never heard anything about that after. Um, we can watch... Zana, wait. Did Zana's dad's interview at the Arizona local station say address that? I'm trying to remember. Do you want me to go grab it real quick? I have it saved. Never like he. Well, he he did. He only did like a local interview at the Arizona news station and then until we recently saw him on the 48 hours but the 48 hours he didn't talk about i don't think he talked about that message he just talked about being at wazoo for jasmine's um parents day weekend i remember hearing about it though i do too yeah because that was in some of the Rumor control, but if we went to the Moscow website, it might still be there. Interesting. One of the yeah, the locally. I'm going to go grab that interview. Hold on. Hyperco Mama. Oh, Leon. Okay. And then. 1228, Zana, Ethan enters Linda Lane. 1 a.m., Ethan, Zana, Linda Lane. 2 a.m., girls take Murphy for a walk. Steve has the video. Wait. XXL Taco Grub Cell Pitcher. Speedo S Banfield Cell Phone. Same pitcher. This proves that Banfield is one hour in front XXL Taco cannot be at the Grub Truck at 312 because Grub Truck closes at 230. What does this even mean? Screaming from distance, Maddie and Kaylee from Linda Lane 212. And please understand, this is exactly what the emails are like. Was this timeline a part of the actual email? Because I'm pretty sure I know where that time. You know what? Actually, to be fair, I don't know. To be fair, I don't know because it's a different color. So I don't know. Because I didn't watch the actual live like the the, the entirety. I just kind of jumped through. So I don't know. Mm. I sent up in backstage up at the um, dad interview on Philip Thank Arizona. Thank you. Okay. And then I also sent to your YouTube messenger um, the 4chan stuff and then my favorite Emily video with the clueless reference for later. Oh, I used all these ads, man. He... Okay. He... You need to get your YouTube premium. Yeah, it lapsed. Okay, hold on.
with ties to the valley who was found dead with three roommates in a house near the University of Idaho last weekend. Sarah Robinson talked exclusively with her father in Avondale today. Still so many questions, Sarah. Yes, a lot of questions. Zana Kernodal was raised in Idaho, but she spent time here in the Valley since her dad moved to Avondale a few years ago. He describes her as fun, smart, and strong-willed and says it's impossible to imagine she was killed in the worst homicide police say they've ever seen in this small Idaho city. She didn't really worry about the, the drama stuff that much. Yeah. She wasn't into that. She just like having fun, we didn't worry about materialistic things. She was with her friends all the time. Avondale father, Jeffrey Kernodal, who was too distraught to be on camera, remembering the life of his daughter, Zanna. One of the victims of the brutal stabbing at the University of Idaho, leaving four college roommates dead on Sunday. I heard from her oh, yeah. before we went her out, I think midnight. Nights. It's the last yeah. time we're from her, and then she's fine. The murders happened early Sunday morning, rocking the small town of Moscow, Idaho, which hasn't had a murder since 2015, according to state records. I have no idea. That doesn't make sense. He says Zana was in constant communication with her family, and nothing about that night seemed unusual. The door locks with the number code. Uh-huh. Every time you open it, like I had to go back to the, I had to go around the house to get in the house because of the number code, so... They either knew that or they just kind of went around and found the slider open. A father struggling to understand how this could have happened. Why Zana? They were just hanging out at home. Yeah. Zana was hanging out at home uh -huh. with her boyfriend. Two other female roommates, Madison Mogan and Kaylee Gonsalves, were killed along with Zana's boyfriend, Ethan Chapin, who Jeffrey loved. As her and Ethan were together about a year, mm -hmm. give or take some, whatever, but she... She really, when I went up there, it was a, I saw her just, you know, a week before that, she changed a lot. She, she's, she had a life. She got to see what it was to be, have a boyfriend to live and have a real life. And she really like turned around and was being really responsible, yeah. helping him out into the studies and stuff. I was really impressed. Colonel says there's one thing the autopsy shows for certain. Xana, a strong-willed girl, fought her killer until the very end. Bruises, Bruises. and just, you know, maybe hurt by the knife or whatever. Yeah. She would accept. She's a tough kid. Whatever she wanted to do, she, she could do it. A very disturbing case. Investigators say they still believe this is a targeted attack, but the killer is still out there. Hmm. So he said before they went out, is that what he said? Oh, because he never said a time. Yeah. He, he just said they were hanging out at home. Okay. And then these are the, oh no. Okay. And then this is the 4chan post. When was the, when were the 4chan posts? When, when were those being posted? Yeah. Oh Lord, you got me looking again. Uh, yeah, yeah. These, these started December posting back, oh, sorry, you got it? December 28th. Well, do I have to play uh, Grizzlies first? It's not, it's not a, it's not a video. It's just some oh. stuff I took some screenshots of and I looked up 4chan and I sent you anything I could find 4chan online. Okay. The 4chan post. Low yeah, like she, Sigma Chi. Yeah. So she's teaching people what some of the codes are in there when you read them. <laughs> Apparently the night of the murders Ethan and Loach got into a fight at Sigma Chi, and Ethan said Loach had shriveled balls from roids. Okay. Zana was talking shit, too. Loach has long-standing beef with Ethan and apparently Maddie, too. Barry and Loach are butt buddies who talked about murder fantasies before. Also, something about Barry being Ethan's tutor and not doing well with it. So shriveled balls comment triggered the roid rage in Loach 
and his little twink sidekick carried out their long standing fantasy together. This is at least what gathered from frat Enam. Did I just, did, was that really on Grizzlies? Uh, yeah, so she just went over what the 4chan posts were. There's been a few uh, creators I've seen go over, like, the full things that were out there. Did she read that in her accent? Uh, you want me to go grab it so we can check it out? It must have sounded much better in her accent. Beautifully. Do you want me to go grab it? How she'll did she ball sound when she said it? Much Probably amazing. Yeah, she'll let you use her video as long as you credit her. No, it just uh, she. Do you want to hear her say it? Crossier than me. Do you want to hear her say it? Yeah, kind of. Okay, I'm going to get it. One sec. I'm sorry, guys. Like I, I don't sound like that. Well, damn. There go, wow. <laughs> um, <sighs> motive, extended feud, and cover up suspects Jack David, David Adam, witness Jack. David B. feud with Ethan and Zana since fall rush. Jack S. knows. Kaylee dumps Jack and doesn't want him back. Possibly preggers. Jack S. knows. Jack S. tells Kaylee and Maddie everything. Maddie tells Adam everything. Adam notifies David. David rallies the troops, then scopes 1122 King and is seen by Buddy's drunk sister on the way there. Adam sees Maddie, Kaylee, Jack S. head to food truck. David picks Adam from corner truck. Reconvene at David's house with the boys and meet up with David B. Kaylee, Maddie head home from food truck and Jack S. heads to cabin. Takes Genesis and meet up with Jack and stolen Elantra. David waits at Genesis. The boys take the Elantra to Deacon parking. Adam waits at the Elantra. Jack and David walk over to the King Road and do the dirty. Jack upstairs, David second floor, put clothes in backpacks with knives, put on baggy clothes, return to Elantra, head back to Genesis. One person ditches Elantra and backpack evidence, rest, drive home, and maintain alibis. Wine moms want it to be an incel so bad so they can believe they turned him down in the past and made him a killer, and thus somehow make it all about them. What? What? It said it with an I. <laughs> Boys. Um, okay. Nah, like we like to throw kittens off bridges. December 28th, 22. We can begin a slow migration. Uh, okay. Right, Thomas. Right. Yeah, you're late, Christina. <laughs> you're very late. But welcome. Welcome. 
I remember this. I do. I, I remember this. And this one was, it went around massively. Um, and it said, um, and trigger warning. It was dated Monday, December 12th, 2022. And it said it hung there and you could read it from a ceiling fan and shoved, you know, you could read it. You could read it. Yeah. It's, it's horrible. Um, and then this is the 4chan rumor that Sigma Chi frat bros involved. DNA not CODIS. I can't read all this. There's no way. I can't do all that. That one was super creepy, but I remember Angel, like that was one of the first main one that it actually got traction. I remember how much that one, like the hanging from the ceiling on that one, people really did speculate if there was something behind that one. They were everywhere on Yanka. So I don't know if what the screenshot I took is from this exact live, but it may kind of help. Um, Four chan on YouTube. You're naked. Put some clothes on. God dang it! I like being yeah. naked. I don't know either. Ah, uh, thank you, Christina. I don't know either. Um, trying to understand. I, I, I saw like the Trent Bolton in the Watts case. I saw that happen, but it was nothing like this. It, it it shocked me like but it was different like it wasn't the same still shocking but it wasn't it still wasn't the same yes but like i the only other the only other case I could can, I can compare it to is the Watts, but I I really think this is on a different level than the Watts. Like I can compare it to the Watts. I think this is worse than the Watts, but they're different. Also, they're different. Also, but when it's all said and done, I think Idaho is going to take the cake. It, it is, Michelle, and it's not done. Because at least with Watts, we're able to look hindsight and we have the answers now. We don't yet with Idaho. Oh, he admitted after a couple days. Sonny Cat. But it that also fueled the conspiracy because... They stopped investigating. Right. It was speculated upon because it was published December 12th before we knew who BK was. But it was said they were hiding in PA. Exactly. Where BK eventually was found. Exactly, Mary said. Thank you. It. That's why I'm like, you know, I, it's a gross and horrific post, but it really did make its rounds. But he did get 
he did go in and speak to investigators. That's what I'm trying to say. Like he went and directly sat down with investigators. Like that is crazy. That's crazy. Hey, Breezy. Okay. Once the third floor light turned on, they did it. Bruh, you can see the King Road house from David's room. Once that third floor light turned on, they did it. 19 minutes total, walk included. Talked about this shit at Bishop. Loach and E got in a fight that night. Zana allegedly talking shit. Loach had problems with Mads also. This shit been brewing since fall rush last year. They went quiet on SM for two weeks before and after the dread. Barry's mom a paralegal, so he knows not to say shit. Loach cleared his SM. Had to take a shit. And bear at the party. Loach had Ethan had issues back to Ethan rushing. Eth talked shit about Leech taking roids and having his balls shrivel. Loach pissed as he wanted Ethan. For dumbass is young and like ETH, tutors are assigned. Barry blew it with ETH. Ethan is second year fresher. Barry also self-conscious about his ooh, blood and talks empty shit. Yeah, but media saying titties was target. What? Titties bad luck? Titties? What did, what did the titties ever do? This is... What? What is... All right, I can't do the 4chan stuff. This this makes my... Mm -mm -mm. Kaylee is titty? Okay. Yeah, I can't do the... I can't do this stuff. This stuff is weird. Barry got a bid because our house GPA sucked. Rogaine had ample opportunities and will play grieving boyfriend. Barry's dad works for a professional cleaning company. That shit is disposed of in Garden City over Thanksgiving holiday. Okay. Okay. Apparently, the night of the murders, Ethan and Loach got into a fight over shriveled balls. Okay, I read that one. Okay, I read this one. Oh, yeah, the Pocono Mountains in Pennsylvania. Yes, this is why. See? The Pocono Mountains. See, I hung, you see it? From a, in a shithole PA. Good luck catching me. I'm not going to read the rest, but you could see it. And it was before they caught him. So that is why this went crazy. We're still searching for a white Elantra. Food of the person who stumbled up to our door and bled all over it, then knocked over our flower pots. Thanks to the two awesome guys who noticed our flower pots knocked over and cleaned them up. I'm beginning to think this patio, patio is cursed. They have apparently deleted this post from Instagram, however, so I can't check the dates or anything to confirm when this took place. <laughs> it's wild, right? Yeah, it's fucking wild. You could you play that video where she kind of explains like the how they try to connect the frats to it. That might kind of which video? Um, I sent you on YouTube Messenger a timestamp for Grizzly. It says like it starts at frat and then it goes down to four chan. You see it. 
Harbor Freight knows. There. Damn. Hey, I was about to say, why aren't you saying a word? Sorry. <laughs> You're fine. Okay. Is it okay if I drop the link to this video? Hey, sorry. What? Is it okay if I drop the link to this video? Yeah, of course. Okay. Are we going to hear her say shriveled ball sack in her voice? <laughs> I don't know. I think she's going to read over one. I'm, I don't know. It's supposed to go into it. We'll see. <laughs> Which could be unrelated it. to the four <laughs> victims, but maybe it could be in that person's mind completely related. We just don't know, right? We just don't know. Let's see. Oh, sorry if I'm missing anything. Welcome to all the new members. Marie says, love your program. Thank you so much. So the reason... I just want to see. Cases with Cal said, did you ever see the alcohol incident report? Wonder if any of those guys were from the fret. I would assume they were from the fret, but I didn't see the report. Do you have the report? If anyone's got the actual report, please send it to me. We're going to get to the 4chan stuff. But the point is, to me, you know, there's a lot of cases that we've seen where it's just like, whoops, they drowned, and it just makes no sense to me. Um, like uh, Jelani Day. A case I've covered before in the past, so check that case out as well. There's a lot of things that are like, huh. And so you're telling me that this person just ended up in the water, just like got into a creek or a river, whatever it is, and just it just drowned. It just makes no sense sometimes, right? So interesting. Okay, and you guys are like, say the four. <laughs> you guys are all four chan. <laughs> oh man, you guys are so excited for the four chan. Okay, I've got the four chan post here on a presentation so that we can look at it together. Here I say, what do all four victims have in common? I do it like this because we got to think like this because there's four victims, two people in the house are unharmed. Maybe the killer got tired. We don't know. Maybe they got so tired after killing four people that like, okay, I'm just going to head out now, whatever. That could happen. It is possible. It takes a lot of strength to do. If one person did this, it would take a lot of strength for them to do, right? So... That is the thing as well. I know um, you guys are all, there's a few of you saying drunk drownings are unfortunately common. That is true as well. Could be that. It just would be great if there was like a toxicology report or official information about that as well to clear up some speculation. So maybe it will be, right? Okay. Welcome to 5,000 Grizzlies. I hope each and every one of you is subscribed. If not, please hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. It looks uh, great when I see 90,000 grizzly, 91. We're all here together. And then you know you'll never miss out, especially if you hit the bell. You right. Be here for, especially tomorrow. John Kelly talking about um, the Delphi case. Okay. So let's quickly read this before I get into this. JJ Sykes said, my theory is that somehow drugs are involved. I think the roommates were hiding drug evidence, hence the delayed call to 911. What do you think? I'm not too sure. I don't know. What am I watching, though? What More in line with what uh, John Kelly was saying the other day. So if you missed that episode, check it out. But, uh, okay, what do all four victims have in common? So firstly, they attended the same... Am I, am I at the right time, time stamp? 
Yeah. He's about to get into the fortune stuff. University. In time that night. 1.56, according to Kaylee's sister, who got the footage. Maddie and Zayna. Initially, there were rumors that Kaylee had also worked there. Initially, it was actually reported that Maddie and Kaylee worked. Where did Kaylee work? Where did Ethan work? Just out of interest sake. Those are questions I have, right? Uh, the same two, Maddie and Zayna, were in the Pi, Beta, Phi, Sorority. But they're all within proximity of the campus of all, all super close, lots of parties happening. I mean, the night before, the Friday, the on the Friday night, Kaylee and Maddie had gone to the Pi Beta Phi sorority party, according to Kaylee's mother. So congratulations, Moon Baby. You know, there's lots of things to consider. And yes, I don't know. I don't know if I'm just saying things that you guys haven't heard of. I hope you have. But there's like this, this there's another rumor of some girl who is making a movie called kill the clones but that's been taken down from youtube otherwise i would have showed it to you long ago because that was very interesting and her posts and suggestions were also very very violent so who knows what's going on there and now it's been taken down you know a lot of these kids at the university have taken down their social media or made it private or whatever so okay wait i'm just i'm gonna just drop the link for this because it's late anyway i gotta be up in a couple hours <laughs> and i didn't sleep so i'm gonna drop the link to this i'm just gonna end it here but thank you for sharing this no problem I thank you. all nighter so it's probably smarter just to drop, if you guys want to watch it i'll drop the link but the next live what i want to do is i want to go over dave and here's a link to this I thought it was going to be, um, what's it called? Oops. Shriveled Bullsack. <laughs> I went to Shriveled Bullsack, however she says it. Um, but I want to go over Dave, uh, Dave, and now I'm even more interested to go over Dave with what Watts said, I, but I want to now kind of like watch her live. Uh, before I do it and get refreshed with what her sources have told her and what she's put out because it's been a while yeah. and <sighs> what it okay I'll what? ask you I'll ask you so I was like just something I was thinking organizationally but I'll ask you I'll yeah okay. okay um yeah, I need to get to like my brain's not functioning, guys. Um, oh, I, feel so I apologize, and I didn't. I don't mean to abruptly end it, but I know I have to be up in a couple hours, so I'm just trying to make a smart move here because I'm just not processing right now. Um, yeah. But I, I appreciate you guys, and Shay, I appreciate you so much, and thank you all so much for being here. And I will see you guys tomorrow. So thank you for anybody who sent super chats or gifted memberships. Thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you, and I will see you tomorrow night, Shay. I love you so much. I'll message you when we get off. And so I'll talk to y'all soon. Good night. Good night.